Hi, I don't know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. All of this is the Actors Fund. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Hello, my name is James Renault Iglehart, and welcome to the New Works Virtual Festival, a benefit for the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund is a 501 charitable organization that supports everyone involved in the entertainment industry. So, please make a donation if you can by texting 5678-GIVE to 56512 or go to theactorsfund.org slash NWVFest. We appreciate your support and now... Sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, I'm Connie Dinkler. I'm very excited to be a part of the New Works Virtual Festival and I feel so honored that a group of such talented actors are performing my work. The title of my play is Happy Couples. Now everyone knows about the high divorce rate and how devastating divorce can be. And some say that the reason for the high divorce rate is simply the fact that couples don't have the same incentive to stay together like they used to. So I thought to myself, what if couples had a very big incentive to stay together? Like say a few billion dollars. My play Happy Couples is about three couples all on the brink of divorce. They discover that their great uncle is going to leave his entire fortune to the one couple that can stay happily married the longest. I want to thank everyone who's been involved in putting this festival together. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you'll donate. A rise, a lavish living room of a grand mansion. There is a sofa, several armchairs and tables, and expensive statues vases. There's a telephone on one of the tables. There is a large table with several chairs off to one side, a whip bar, and a television. Doorbell rings. You must be Mr. and Mrs. Lindsay. Please have a seat. Mr. Sizemore will be with you soon. Thank you. I can't believe I got time off work to come here. Uh, your uncle just died. It doesn't matter to Jim. If it were up to him, I would have had to have three relatives die in the same week before I could get any time off. I wish I didn't have to go back there tomorrow. All he does is yell and threaten to fire me every other week. Don't worry. You save that company thousands of dollars every month with the work you do, and he knows it. He'll never fire you. Hey, maybe we'll get enough money from this inheritance for me to start up my own company. You can be my personal secretary. We'll set up our own hours, 12 to one with a one hour lunch break. And if you want to, have, if you want to have a kinky and tawdry affair with your new boss, I won't have any objections. Oh, really? Really? Oh, I wish I would have had the chance to spend more time with Uncle Clarence. Yeah, I would have liked to have gotten to know him better myself. He was a strange character even before he became wealthy. The money just made him even more eccentric and gave him another excuse to avoid the family. He was always afraid of being taken advantage of. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that any of us are in his will. I wonder why no one told us about the funeral. Well, he once told me that when he died, he wanted a quiet service. I guess he got one. So, have you thought about what to do with our share of the money? 
Do you think it's a little inappropriate to be talking about the money right now? Justine, come on. This is the reading of the will. We're supposed to be talking about money. That's what we're here for. It's just that... I just think that the sooner we work out how it will be squandered, the better. That's all. Should we get the timeshare in Cancun or buy that motor home we were looking at last summer? Neither. Uh, that wasn't one of the choices. I think we should put it in the bank. That wasn't one of the choices either. Justine, were you listening? Come on, Anthony. We should save it for the kids' college. College? Yes. That's where people go after graduating high school. Oh. We need to start saving now. You want them to go to a good school, don't you? I didn't get to finish college. I've always hoped that they would have a better opportunity than I did. Yes, but that's such a long way off. And you know, they, they may decide college isn't right for them. They have to go to college. A person can't succeed in life without a college degree. Well, that's your opinion. I didn't go to college and I turned out just fine. Christine, you're always so uptight. I think we should use the money to take a nice vacation. We've both been under so much stress lately. If we don't do something soon, we're going to explode. We could take that trip to Egypt we've always wanted. We? You're the one who's been wanting to go to Egypt. How is it that your dreams somehow end up being our dreams and my dreams are forgotten along the way? But you said you'd like to take a trip to Egypt. Of course I would like a trip to Egypt if my only other alternative was to work eight hours every day and then come home to a dirty house with two screaming kids. Compared to that, a trip to Idaho would sound like heaven. But if I had my choice of vacations, Egypt would not even be in my top 40 list. So don't make it sound like you're making my dreams come true if you take me to Egypt. It's your dream, not mine. But if you paid a little bit more attention to me and listened to me once in a while, you'd know that. I'm sorry, you're right. I should be more sensitive. We can go to Idaho if that's what you really want. If your dreams are forgotten, it's your fault. You sacrifice everything you want all on your own. You always put the kids before your own needs and you never stand up for what you want. Then you end up blaming me for your unhappiness. That's not fair. I can't fight your battles for you, Justine. Look, I'm sorry, come on, let's not fight. With the money Uncle Clarence is going to leave us, we'll have plenty for both our dreams. We can go to Egypt and Idaho. I don't wanna go to Idaho. I don't understand. Doorbell rings. Mr. and Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Please come in and have a seat. Mr. Sizemore will be with you soon. Next time, please let me drive. We could have been here half an hour ago. But we would have arrived in one piece. Anthony, it's so good to see you. Hi, Tina, Earl. It's been ages. Hi, Justine. Where are the kids? You didn't bring them? They're with my parents. I thought this would be kind of boring for them. Boring? What could be boring about inheriting money? Oh, I wish you would have brought them. I got them some presents. Here, I thought they could use some nice clothes. Thank you. Isn't she thoughtful, dear? She thinks our kids don't wear nice clothes. Looking good, Justine. Thanks, you too. You two always did make quite the handsome couple. Thank you, Earl. How have you two been? Uh, pretty good. What about the two of you? Great. Never better. Do you still work at that little hole-in-the-wall construction company, Justine? Yeah, I do. But they just recently rented out the warehouse next door, so I guess you could call it a medium-sized hole-in-the-wall construction company now. Ah, well, maybe soon you can buy the company. Do you guys have any idea what Clarence has left you? No, we have no idea. I hope we get that beach house. That's if it's in a good neighborhood and not in Huntington Beach. Earl has an ex-girlfriend who lives in Huntington Beach. Well, I would be happy with any old hole in the wall beach house, no matter where it was. But if the property's not in the right area, its value will go down and then it would be practically worthless in just a matter of a few years. Not to mention the fact that if people found out we were living in the wrong part of town, well, it would be all over for Earl's career. And how is that going, Earl? All right. Oh, don't be so modest. He's doing wonderful. He's got this prominent agent now who's convinced he can get- Does anybody know what time it is? Uh, it's a quarter to nine. Thanks. I left my watch in the car. Justine, how's your father? He's doing okay. His knees have been bothering him a little though. Arthritis. I guess time catches up to all of us sooner or later. How's the restaurant? Oh, business is going very well as always, but I'm a little worried. Uncle Frank's retiring next year and Pop's getting older and he can't get around as well as he used to. He's been trying to find someone to take over the business, but none of the family want to. 
why not? The place has always been in your family for years. Yeah, since way before I was even born. But my brother's not willing to move back here to help run it, says he can't stand the city, and Pop doesn't have anyone else. I can help him out when I can, but there's no way I could run the place full time. I guess he'll have to sell it or something. I don't know. I hope he doesn't. I'm sorry to hear that. I know how much that restaurant has meant to you and your family. I wonder where Patsy and Stuart are. I don't see why he would leave those two anything. She never appreciated the money he gave her when he was alive. She just wasted it on bingo and tacky clothes and never would put any of it towards her own bills. And isn't her son still in jail? It's no wonder your uncle disowned her. Disowned all of us. Maybe that's them. Or maybe it's Mr. Sizemore. Are we late? Has it started yet? Patsy, so nice to see you. Has he read the will yet? Uh, no, Mr. Sizemore isn't here yet. Does anybody know what I'm getting? Show some class. That man was your uncle. Oh, shut up, you little. Uh, Patsy, be nice. What the hell for? In case they get more than us. Oh, good point. I don't think anyone knows anything yet. Patsy, you haven't changed a bit. Still only out for yourself. That's not true. Man, I hate this waiting stuff. It's bad enough we had to wait 78 years for Clarence to die in the first place. Now I gotta wait some more. Come on, Pat. Is that any way to talk about your great uncle, especially since he's gone? Well, hell, if he wouldn't have been so stingy when he was alive, maybe I would have been a little nicer. He had all that money and all that time. I needed a little help. I had to beg and plead for him to even throw me a little tiny scrap. Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. If the money is split evenly, 40 billion split three ways is, is uh, Karen, just, it, it's a lot of money. Yeah, boy, I could finally buy me that home entertainment center with the 72 inch flat panel plasma screen and surround sound and built in Wi-Fi. Who was giving you any of the money? Well. Honey bear, I am entitled to the money, just as much as you are. I am your husband. Well, maybe you won't be my husband for very long. What's that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that maybe you won't be my husband for very long. You're not talking divorce, are you? Because if you try to divorce me, I could take half of everything, including your inheritance. Honey child, I'm not talking divorce. I'm talking death. Go ahead and take half my money. But baby, you're gonna have a hard time spinning it because last time I checked, coffins don't come with no ATM machines. Now, Patsy, baby, don't, no need to be that way. I'm sorry. Why do you keep trying to kiss up to her? She's only out for herself. She's always been that way. I remember one time we went to a friend's birthday party. Pat wanted this dollhouse that the little girl got so much that she told everybody she was dying of cancer. So the little girl's mother made her give Patsy the dollhouse. Yeah, I remember that. Why didn't you tell anyone? Uh, she threatened to tell everybody I had lice if I told. That girl was a brat. She didn't deserve no Barbie fashion bazaar. Why you guys got to bring up the past? Let's just leave it in the past where I started telling these girls some stories about the two of you. All right, Patsy. Where is Mr. Sizemore? I don't know. He should be here by now. I wonder who's getting his car. He knows how much Earl always loved his car. You mean the old Mustang? Ooh, that's one fine piece of machinery, all right. I hope Clarence leaves you his wardrobe. Oh, well, thank you, Marcy. I'm not Marcy. That was Earl's ex-wife. Oh, oops, sorry. Doorbell rings. Mr. Sizemore, they're all here waiting for you, sir. Wonderful. I'll be in the library if you need anything. Thank you, Ernest. You are most accommodating. Good morning, folks. How are we this fine day? Oh, get on with it. What'd we get? Patsy, come on, have a little patience, will you? Look, I don't know who inherited the patient, ge patient's gene in this family, but it sure as hell wasn't me. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, where's Clarence? Who? Clarence. Clarence? Yes. You mean Clarence? Clarence? Our great uncle Clarence? Yes, well, that, of course that's who I mean. We can't start without him. That would be rather rude, don't you think? What? Man, this dude has done lo lost his last marbles. Yep, he's one can short of a six-pack, I'd say. Oh, my. He said he was going to be here. One notion short of a thought. Not the sharpest tool in the shed now, is he? Well, I see that everyone made it. Oh, my God. Where are the kids, Justy? Hello there, Clarence. Uncle Clarence? 
What the hell? No, I'm not there yet. It's good to see you made it, Earl. Aren't you supposed to be dead? Patsy, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not dead yet. Oh, I can see that. Patsy, you sound a little disappointed. How are we supposed to inherit money when the inheritee isn't dead? When Mr. Sizemore phoned you about my will, I suppose he neglected to tell you that I was still alive. Yes, it seems you left that part out. Theodore, you can forget about that bonus. Sorry about the misunderstanding. I thought everyone knew the whole circumstances. Dear, I, I certainly didn't mean to upset anyone. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that this family isn't very close, Mr. Sizemore. We don't really keep in touch. Well, it's obvious why he wouldn't keep in touch with some members of this family. Yeah, it is, isn't it? My heavens, but this must be a wonderful day for all of you here, then. I uh, hear you all thought your uncle was dead, and lo and behold, he's alive! Clarence, it's, it's wonderful to see you're alive, but I don't understand. What is this about a will, then? Yeah, that stupid idiot said for us to be here because he was going to read the will. You don't read somebody's will if they're not dead. Well, I may not be dead yet, but I will be soon enough. Unfortunately, my doctors have discovered that I have a brain tumor. I don't have much time left. That's terrible. That's, it's okay. I've been on this planet long enough already. This old body doesn't work as good as it used to anyhow. Now, I'm not one to sit around and suffer. I don't particularly care for pain. So, my doctor is going to put me to sleep. <laughs> Goodness, it sounds like I'm a dog. <laughs> anyway, I have all of my millions and millions I had to figure out what to do with. I can't take it with me. Don't think that I haven't tried to figure out how. But there are only so many stacks of bills you can fit into a casket before it begins to look too tacky. My old will needed revising. It was so outdated, I still had your parents on it. <laughs> Who would have known you kids would outlive them? I threw that one out. And I made a new one. And then I decided to make a little game out of it. <laughs> you know how much I love games. This don't sound so good. You kids are my only living heirs, Earl, Patsy, and Anthony, and your children. Now, you three are all married. But how long will it last? Young people don't know what it means to be married these days. You don't know the real meaning of marriage. Your great aunt and I were married for 52 years. They weren't all happy years. In fact, not even, most of them were happy. Well, come to think of it, none of them were happy, but we stayed together because we believed in marriage and because nobody else would have either of us anyway. I have been alive for 78 years now and I've seen you, Anthony, go through two divorces, you Earl four and you Patsy six. This is absolutely ridiculous. If you're having a little trouble with your mate, you break up, find another, only to end up with the same problems. You think that by leaving a person, you're leaving your problems? It doesn't work that way, because you are the problem. You carry yourself with you when you go to the next marriage, and then you wonder why you can't seem to make a marriage work. You treat life like one big amusement park. You get on a ride, and if it isn't fun enough for you, you get off, and you get on another one, and that wasn't big enough thrill. You get on another one. But don't you see? They all make you sick in the end. So you might as well stick with one, and then you don't go home with sore feet from walking all day. Pat, I, I thought you were only married two times before me. Hmm, I thought it was five. I had five husbands. I married one of them twice. So technically, I guess I was married six <coughs> times. But I count the two as one because he don't deserve double credit. The first time I was too young and stupid. And the third one, I was drunk. So that doesn't count either. You all seem to divorce the second things aren't going your way. Well, let me tell you that if your parents would have done that, none of you would exist today. Not that I'm saying that that's not a happy thought. You don't know the importance of the institution of marriage. But I'm going to teach it to you. I am leaving everything I own, and I mean everything. Control of Lindsay Enterprises, every piece of real estate, every stick of furniture, every share of stock, every automobile, every last cent, and every asset down to the paper clips in my desk drawers. To one couple. The one couple that stays happily married the longest. What? 
Uncle Clarence is not playing with the full deck, is he? Looks like he's one brick short of a load. Not the brightest crayon in the box. For once in my life, I agree with Patsy. Come on, Clarence, this, this is a joke, right? Mm, I'm afraid not, Marcy. It's Tina. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Memories, not what it used to be, forgive me. Uncle Clarence, come on, this is crazy. You've got, you've got so much money that you've carefully invested over the years. You've worked hard all your life to build your empire. Don't, don't you think you should rethink this? Is that what Earl told you? I've thought about it all I need to, and my money is very important to me. And I don't think anyone deserves it as much as I do. But since I can't take it with me, I'm just going to give it all to the couple that can stay in love. And I think it's a good cause. Even if I save one of your lousy, doomed marriages, it will be worthwhile. Now, I'm going to lay down a bit. Mr. Sizemore will answer all your questions. This is crazy. I can't believe this. We should just go. Go? Why? Damn it, I was counting on using part of that money to pay for my divorce. Now I'll have to reevaluate my plans. Ha, <laughs> very funny. I thought it was. What a jackass. Who does he think he is telling us we had to stay together to get our money, treating us like a, we're little kids? Would anyone like to hear the terms of the will? Yes. Please, go ahead, Mr. Sizemore. What's the point? There's no way I'm going through with this. Earl, let's at least hear what the terms are. There's no way we can win. Shut up, Stuart. Okay, shall I begin? All right, then. I, Clarence Earl Lindsay, being of sound mind and body, have agreed that upon my death, my entire estate, including all three pieces of real estate in California, the property in Colorado, property in Illinois, the penthouse in New York City, New York, control of Lindsay Enterprises and all my various stocks, bonds, et cetera, et cetera, of which my attorney named Theodore Marvin Sizemore will have complete and detailed list of all the rights to the above mentioned is to be given to one of the following named couples. Jointly, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Earl Lindsay III, Mr. and Mrs. Stuart Jeffrey Blake, or Mr. and Mrs. Anthony Lawrence Lindsay. Out of the three above named couples, whoever remains faithfully in their marriage the longest length of time shall inherit the entire Lindsay fortune. Said couples must, during the entire duration of a qualification period, adhere to the following rules. Rule number one, in order to qualify the inheritance, the winning couple must not attempt to file for divorce and or annulments or legal separations at any time from this day forward until such time the aforementioned inheritance is received. Number two, the couples must reside in the same household namely Lindsay Estate, located at 555 Lindy Estate Drive, Bel Air, California, for the entire duration of the qualifying period. Well, at least he didn't say the same room. Wait, we have to live here? Yes. Your great uncle decided it would be better for, it would be more convenient that way. He could keep better track of you all. Oh, don't worry. I was able to dissuade him from charging you rent. And you will get free meals while you're here as well. They give you free meals in prison as well. I can't drive to work and back every day from here. Hell, if we live here, I'm going to quit my job. After I win all the money, I won't have to work no more anyway. You only work one day a week anyway. Shut up, Stuart. Shall I continue? Yeah, get on with it. Number three. In order to qualify for the inheritance, the winning couple must spend each and every night sleeping in the same bed with each other. No exceptions. Oh, God. Well, he, he didn't say the same room, dear. Number four. Any couple who commits any form of adultery will be immediately disqualified. Boy, Uncle Clarence really knows just how to take all the fun out of the game now, doesn't he? Hey. Number five. Couples must at all times appear to all outside entities as a happy couple. If it is reported either to Mr. Sizemore or any other staff member or Clarence Lindsay himself that any of the above mentioned couples appear to be unhappily married and can supply physical proof thereof or supply ample witnesses, excluding any member of the three participating couples, said couple shall be immediately disqualified and will receive none of the inheritance. Small disagreements are allowed, however. If any couple is caught in a physical confrontation 
or a loud verbal argument and or confrontation, they too shall be immediately disqualified. See description of loud below. Any profanity or, profanity or derogatory statement directed towards a spouse will immediately result in disqualification, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. This includes, but is not limited to the following. Uh, I'll let you folks read through this part at your leisure. These rules also apply to derogatory, insulting gestures. Uh, see description below. Did he just say we can't cuss at each other? Boy, I don't think we're going to win, dear. Oh, shut the hell up, Stuart. Rule number six. No one is allowed to disclose the inheritance or the rules regarding the inheritance to any outside persons, including friends or family members. Only use six and those hired by Mr. Lindsay are to know about it. Why not? This is to keep you from putting any extramarital relationships temporarily on hold. As ridiculous as it sounds, your uncle is hoping to make a difference in your marriages and your lives. This is a copy of all the rules for each of you. You will have until the end of the week to think it over. But if I warn you, if you decide not to participate, you will receive nothing. Those of you who do participate or want to participate are to report here at the same time, Saturday the 15th, with all your personal belongings. You will be required to reside here at this estate until the inheritance is settled or until which time you are disqualified or decide to forfeit. Are there any questions? Yeah. How will you know if we're sleeping in the same bed or if we're happy? Or whether we're faithful or not. Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Wild Wildemore, and the house staff will be watching you, both at the estate and at various times when you leave the estate. And furthermore, there is no doubt that you will be watching each other very closely as to ensure none of the other four are cheating. When will we be able to claim our money? I mean, the couple that wins. The winning couple should report to my office as soon as it is proven that the other couples have been disqualified or have dropped out. Here's my card. A notarized letter signed by Mr. Wildemar, he's the one you'll be appointed to watch over you here at the house, will be required. In the event that Wildemar is replaced for whatever reasons, then you will need a notarized letter signed by his replacement. And the investigation will also begin to validate all claims. After it has been proven that the said couple is indeed the winner, proceedings shall begin for the inheritance of Mr. Lilly's entire estate. Isn't this exciting? That could take forever. But well, I have a question. Yes? Could we contest this will, perhaps somehow prove that our uncle was going senile and not mentally capable of making such a decision? I mean, you've got to admit that this is a pretty ridiculous thing to do. Yeah, I'm afraid not, Mr. Lindsay. You see, at the time the will was drawn up, there were two attorneys, including myself, a psychologist, three doctors, two nurses, a notary, and three other witnesses present. I see. Uh, your great uncle, he, I mean, he, he's really thought this out very thoroughly. Now, I, I got to get going now. I have a full schedule today. I have a copy of the documents for each of you. Look these over carefully. If you have any further questions, please give me a call. You have one week to make your decision. We'll meet here on the 15th at the same time to sign and make everything legal. Thank you, Mr. Sizemore. Oh, good day, everyone. Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you all. <laughs> I can't believe this. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Not surprised. Why would he do such a thing? I guess we don't have much choice. We have to either play by his game or give up everything. Well, there's got to be something we can do. Get it, Tina. We can't change his mind. He's too stubborn. We have things to do. We better get going. Yeah, I got to get back to work. Come on, babe. Now, I know I didn't come all the way down here for nothing. What are you doing, Pat? If that old fool won't give me no money, I'm going to make sure I take enough junk out of this old house that I can sell and at least get something. Come on, let's go. That greedy, selfish, ignorant old man. At Rise, scene two, one week later. The same living room at the Lindsay Estate, the doorbell rings. You may wait there until the other guests arrive. Mr. Sizemore will be with you shortly. I don't see why you're so against this. Don't you see, he's just trying to ma ma manipulate us like we're his puppets. It's the same way Dad used to. He doesn't speak to us for 10 years, and now he wants to take all this money in front of us so we can see how he can make us look like idiots. 
It just wants to make a big fool out of all of us. A person who has a chance at inheriting a huge fortune and doesn't even try because of a chip he has on his shoulder, I would call that a fool. Have you even thought about what we could do with the money? We could buy a new car, a new house. You could buy your own recording studio. Look, I said I would give it a try, all right? Aren't you the least bit excited about it? I don't like the idea of being spied on all the time. It, it makes me uneasy. I don't mind at all. That's because you love being in the spotlight. Any kind of spotlight. Come on, look at it this way. We get to stay in this big, beautiful home and have servants wait on us hand and foot for as long as we're here. What's so bad about that? Doorbell rings, Ernest answers. Wow, do we really get to stay here? Yes, we do. Hi, kids. Hi, hey, Tina. How have you been? Okay. Did you get the presents I bought for you? Yeah, Dad said... Uh, hey, why don't you kids go and explore outside? That's hot outside. Did I tell you that Uncle Clarence has three swimming pools? Three? Yes, and his very own lake for fishing. Really? And he has the most beautiful rose garden that is bigger than Grandma's entire yard. So, you're up to this little game too, huh? I guess so. Whatever happens, I hope this doesn't cause any hard feelings in the family. No, you work on breaking up Justine and Anthony, and I'll work on, oh, hi, Earl, how you doing? Hi, cousins. Hello, Patsy. Good, hello, good morning. I see you've all made it. Oh, that's just wonderful. Beautiful day, isn't it? Well, I assume you're all here that you have agreed to the terms of the inheritance. Yeah, here's our papers. Thank you, Mrs. Blake. Very prompt, aren't we? Good morning, kids. I'm good to see you're all here. I'd love to stay in chat, but I'm just on my way to the airport. So, Eismore, you'll let me know how things are going. Of course, sir. I'll telephone first thing in the morning. Super. Uncle Clarence, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. Yeah, I have a deal to make with you. No, oh, I'm sorry, son, but I already told you. No deals. I made up my mind. Now, please just listen to me. How about you just split the money between all of us and we all sign a contract to stay together forever? Mm, no, sir. Can't do that. We'll also agree to go to counseling. <clears throat> we'll all agree to see marriage counselors for the rest of our lives, Uncle Clarence. You could allocate some of the money to go directly to the marriage counselors, and if we miss a visit, we lose all the money. Mm. Th no, <laughs> that wouldn't be nearly as much fun. The contract is already written up now. Are you going to agree to it or not? I guess we have no choice. Sure you do. You can turn around and march right out of here and say goodbye to all my money and go back to your measly little jobs and your measly little lives. And there will be absolutely no hard feelings. No, we're in. All right then. Um, have you all signed the documents I gave you? Oh, uh, let me introduce you to Mr. Wildemar. Mr. Wildemar, this is my nephew, Anthony Lindsay, his wife, Justine, my other nephew, Earl Lindsay, his wife, Tina, and his sister, Patsy Blake, and her husband- Your niece. Well, oh, oh, yes, <laughs> sorry, my niece, Patsy, and her husband, Stuart Blake. I've hired Mr. Wildemar to watch you. He will be keeping an eye on you all while you are here, but remember, if he's not around, that doesn't mean he's not watching. There are cameras in each room and throughout the grounds outside, and the phones are equipped with recording devices. Just a word of warning. Even though it is already written into the contract, anyone who tampers with the monitoring equipment will be automatically disqualified for the inheritance and receive nothing. And I'll also be watching remotely now and then, <laughs> just for the fun of it. That's an invasion of privacy. You're all here on your own free will. We are doing nothing illegal. If you don't like it, Patsy, there's the door. A very expensive door, I might add. Now, I assume that you all have jobs. I don't remember much about those things, except for the fact that one usually requires transportation to and from the workplace. I don't want to cause any hardships on you kids, so I have hired each couple a personal driver to take you wherever you want to go. Now, make yourselves at home. The cooks will prepare your food, and the staff will take care of any other small personal requests. But I wouldn't put your homes on the market or anything just yet. As soon as any of you lose the game, out you go. Now, I'm off to Bermuda. I hope he gets lost in the triangle. 
I'm going to go and enjoy what little time I have left. Good luck to you all. I guess suite has been prepared for each of you. Shall I take your luggage to your room? Yes, please. Yes, thank you. I hope we get the one with the big fireplace. They've all got big fireplaces, you fool. Lunch is at noon, and dinner is served at 6.30. I'm gonna sit down here and check this thing out one last time before I sign in. I'm gonna check out this bar. I couldn't understand any of that stuff anyway. Don't lawyers speak English? No, one of the first things they teach them in law school is to denounce the English language. What does denounce mean? Never mind. It's kind of inconvenient that we have to move in here. Well, it could be worse. Mr. Sizemore, I don't see why we can't take separate vacations. We can't? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, if you were allowed to do that, you all could just take long extended vacations away from each other and wait it out until the others lost. Then there would be a stalemate. Why would you want to go on vacation without me anyway? Once in a while I might like to go camping for a weekend with the guys or something, and I know you wouldn't want to come along. You hate roughing it. You never went camping in your life. Yes, I have. I used to go a lot before we met. Anyway, we can't spend any vacation time unless both of us go. You make it sound like that's a bad thing. I didn't mean anything bad by it. Hey, where is that section? Does that include business trips? Because sometimes I have to go to these sales conventions that last all week. Does that mean I'd have to take Justine? Well, what's wrong with that? I think it's about time you took me to one of those things. Nothing, honey. It's, uh, it's just that you know you can never get out of work to go with me, and we can't risk you losing your job right now. It's on page four. See, any work-related or business-related meetings, conventions, and so forth must be attended by both husband and wife unless the attending spouse is able to return to the estate within 18 hours. Clarence wanted to make sure you folks didn't use business as an excuse to avoiding your spouses. And it's pretty, not, not so bad. And you boys having a change of heart. I'm sure that Mr. and Mrs. Blake wouldn't mind you forfeiting. They seem rather excited about the prospect of inheriting such a great fortune. No. No, we're not forfeiting. Alrighty then. Have you signed the documents? They are all a triplicate. Leave one for yourself. One second. Okay. Here's ours. Thank you, folks. Now, I must be on my way. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll be in touch. You have my card if you need anything. Good luck to you all. I still can't believe I'm doing this. I still can't believe that fool isn't dead. Is it too late to fix that? Patsy, try to be nice. Oh, shut up, Stuart. Okay, everyone. My name is Thomas Wildemar. I'm very happy that Mr. Lindsay has chosen me to be here with you all. I'm very interested in how this whole thing turns out. But well, now that you all have signed everything, the proceedings shall begin immediately. I hope you've all very carefully looked over every detail of the stipulations, because from here on out, one slip up will cost you the inheritance. Okay, with that said, I know you're probably a little uncomfortable with the idea of being watched all the time, but I want to encourage you to just relax and be yourself. I'm not interested in how you spend your free time or how you look first thing in the morning or anything like that. I'm just here to see if you fight or cheat on each other. That's all. Now, there's audio in the bathrooms, but no video cameras, so you don't have to worry about privacy as far as that goes. And remember, at any time, if any of you wants out, no problem. You're free to leave. Just use your common sense. We might all be living together for quite a long time, so I'd like to get to know you all a little better. How long have you all been married? We've been together for two years. Justine and I have been married for 14. We've been married for seven years. And you are the only living heirs of Clarence? That's right. I can't understand why Clarence didn't just divide everything up between us. You know how Uncle Clarence is. He likes to do things his own way. Yeah, but it's pretty stupid way, if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you. It seems this little situation has caused some, ten caused some tensions in the family. No, Mr. Wildemar, these tensions have always been with us. Oh, what a shame. Well, so it has nothing to do with this inheritance, then? Not at all. The money is just intensifying things a little. 
Well, I guess money's important to you all then. Hmm? Duh. Of course it's important to us. I've been waiting all my life. And finally, when I get this inheritance, I'll get what I deserve. You mean 10 years of community service? Uh, you see the way he talks to me, Willie? It's Wildemar. Whatever. Nobody treats me with respect. And I didn't do nothing to deserve that kind of treatment. Well, what is it you plan to use the money for if you win, Mrs. Blake? I'm going to buy me a big fur coat and some fancy shoes and hire me a maid to come clean my house every day. It would be easier to just buy another house than to try to clean yours. Nobody asked you, Mr. High and Mighty. Uh, go on, Patsy. I'm going to get us the fanciest car I can find so them ladies at Bingo will stop sticking their nose up at me. Yeah, and I'm going to buy a big screen TV if, if Patsy lets me. Well, if that keeps his sorry butt at home instead of out gallivanting around at the bars, maybe I'll let him. Any other plans? I'm going to go on a huge shopping spree, first to Rodeo Drive and then to New York City. And that's it? Well, yeah. Uh, what are your plans, Justine? Well, I'd like to pay off all of our debts, open a college fund for the kids, and Clara has been needing braces for a long time, but we don't have dental insurance. She'll be happy to finally be able to get her teeth fixed. And I always wanted to go back to playing the piano. Maybe I'll be able to go to that music school in Berkeley. I have always wanted to start my own business. I'm so sick of sales. So you're in sales? Yes. Uh, what is it you sell? Mostly life insurance. And you don't like it? No. You have to cheat and lie to be successful in this business. Hey, Patsy, have you ever given any thought about going into sales? You better shut up, boy. Owning your own business involves a lot of risk. I know. It's worth the risk to me. I hate always having to answer to someone. I have to always, I have to always be somewhere at a certain time. I just want to be free. Take a trip across the country, just me and Justine, and see the sights. Get back when I feel like it. And what sort of business would you like to run? Well, I thought about either, hey, wait a minute. If we win the inheritance, Justin, we can buy your father's restaurant. Yes. We can give him plenty of money to retire and then the restaurant can stay in your family and it is totally risk-free for us. It's already established. I know a lot about sales and business and you already know all the recipes and the regular customers. It's perfect. Yes, baby, just like you. Just think, we will have all the time in the world to run it. I won't have to work. I could tell my boss goodbye. But we won't always have to be there. We can get someone to look after the place and we can take you off whenever we want. But best of all, your family won't lose that restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get too excited here, Tony. There are four others of us that also plan to win that money. That sounds like a great idea, Anthony. I wish you all the best of luck with everything. It's too bad that you all couldn't win. Maybe the winners will be generous and share some of the wealth after they win. Huh. Why should they? Whoever wins will have worked pretty hard to get there. I don't think the winner should be obligated to share any of it. Would you still feel that way if the winner turns out to be one of the other couples? I think she does have somewhat of a point, Mr. Wildemar. Some people are not quite as deserving of others. And I don't think that egotistical, self-centered people should be rewarded. I see. Hear me, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> well, you folks are probably worn out from your trips. Let me show you to your rooms. Yes. Stu, did you send that package to Joe like I told you, or did you forget like you always do? Did you say something, dear? I said, did you send that package to Joe? Huh? Turn that damn TV off so you can hear me. You're not yelling at me, are you, dear? Because I, I don't want us to fight. That wouldn't be good for our future financially, that is. No, dear, I was not yelling at you. All I was saying is that if you would turn off the television, then maybe you would hear what I'm saying to you. Well, sweetums, maybe if you were a little nicer to me when you spoke to me, I would be able to hear you better. Oh, that's ridiculous, buttercup. <laughs> Don't lose your temper, dear. Mr. Wildemar might think we're fighting. Hey, are you guys fighting in here? No, no, not at all. Stuart seems to be having a little uh, difficulty hearing today. I think we'll make an appointment with the doctor. Maybe he needs a shot or something. Okay, just checking. Stuart, I'm going to go to our room now. Okie dokie, cupcake. And if that package to Joe is not in the mail by three o'clock, you're going to buy me a new black dress. A four. I'll need something appropriate to wear to your funeral. 
Hey, Wildemar, isn't there a clause in that contract that says you can't kill your spouse or you won't win any of the money? Uh, well, um, the doorbell rings. Let me get that. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, I'm looking for Stu. Oh, hey, what's up? I, I went to your house. Uh, mom's man, you weren't there. I wasn't. No, so I called your mom and she told me how to get to this place. Hey, is this your new pad? You like it? Oh, did Patsy's uncle uh, give you this big house? No, no, not yet. Ah, oh, too bad. Man, <laughs> you can get lost coming up that driveway. Hey, well, what did you get? Did, did you get some, you got some cash, right? No, Dave, I, I, I didn't get nothing just yet. Oh, man. Hoping I can borrow a few bucks. What's a holdup? Oh, see, I, I gotta stay married. Um, I, I gotta stay here till all the legal stuff's all worked out. I, I, I think it's gonna take a long time. I know, it's too bad. Hey, but at least you get to stay in this fancy place, huh? <laughs> That's too cool. Oh, oh, do you remember that cute little dark haired chick, huh? Maybe we should go someplace in private to talk. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Wildemar, can, can you excuse us? Uh, Stuart, I, I think it would be very interesting to hear what your friend has to say. Who's this guy? Oh, don't worry about him. He's just one of the servants. Okay, well, anyway, remember the girl we met down at Chuck's bar about a month ago? The one with the legs? Don't they all got legs? Not like her. Come on, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into her last night. Oh, man, is she okay? What? No, man, I, I didn't run into her like that. I, I saw her at the bar. I, she gave me her number. Did you call her? Believe me, I wanted to. But she gave me her number to give to you so you could call her. She likes you, man. Oh, boy, she likes me, huh? Did, did she say... Okay, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, no, I, I can't call her Dave. I'm a married man. So? I mean, that didn't stop you from calling Leslie or Angie or Susie or... All right, all right, all right. Hey, listen, I know that in the past I have not been exactly 100% faithful, but, but things are different now. You, no, no, you got to help me. I have got to stop looking at these women. I've got to stop thinking about them. Do you understand? No. Dave, Dave, right now, my marriage is more important to me than anything else, and I cannot risk it by having any kind of affair with some woman I barely know. I get it. All right. It's about the inheritance, isn't it? Huh? You're still being nice. No, no. It has nothing to do with the inheritance. No, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, all right, all right. Gigs up, man. <laughs> what, what, what planet are you from? And, and what did you do with my best friend? I want him back, because I, I want him back now. No, I'm being serious, Dave. I, I want to stay faithfully married to Patsy for a long, long time. Maybe even forever. Okay, I'm going to count to 10, uh, you eyeball poking, body snatching, sorry excuse of an alien. Cause... Dave, I'm not an alien. It's really me. All right, then. Prove it. Tell me something that only Stort would know about me. Uh, oh, uh, all right, all right. Let me see here. Um, oh, I know. You still sleep with your stuffed pink rabbit you call peppermint. Did you have to say that out loud? I mean, you could have just said my mother's maiden name or something. Jesus. All right. So you want to stay with Patsy forever? For the, for the rest of your life? All right. Okay. I'll go along with it for now. But if this keeps up for much longer, I am, I'm, I'm sending you to a shrimp. There is no way in hell that any sane man on this earth or any other planet, for that matter, would want to live with that woman for the rest of their life. I heard that. Stu, you better get that man out of this house. You don't have any money. I'm going to go to my sister's now. And she might have some cash I can borrow. I'll see you. Hey, I'll be calling you with some numbers with some good shrinks. Hey, something smells good. What are you cooking? I just finished baking some cookies. Really? They're not for you, they're for Earl. Have you seen him? Uh, yeah, he's my brother-in-law, of course I've seen him. I mean, have you seen him lately? Like in the past few minutes? Oh, uh, no. Oh, there you are. Hey. I picked you some cookies. Oh, thanks. Uh, I just ate those, so I'm not very hungry. I'm, I, I, 
Just on my way to the pool, I'll eat them later. Uh, I'm hungry. But these are your favorite. Don't you like them anymore? Of course I do, but I just ate. I, I didn't just eat. You just ate and you're going swimming? You shouldn't swim if you've just eaten. I, I'm not going swimming. I'm just going to lay by the pool. You sound like my mother. I wish I would have known that you just ate. I spent all afternoon baking these for you. I'm sorry. I'm sure they're great, and I will have them just a little later. But they won't be as good later. They'll be cold. I made a special trip to the store to get the ingredients, and I was kind of hoping you'd be more excited. Sorry. You just, you caught me at the wrong time. Well, I, I guess I could see if Stuart wants them. That's a good idea. Ooh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Don't you care? Care about what? <laughs> that I worked hard all afternoon on these cookies for you, and I'm just going to give them to someone else. Well, I mean, I... You didn't even taste one. You didn't ask me to. I brought them to you. Yes, and I told you I would eat them later. Why do I have to eat them now? It doesn't even matter to you that I give them to Stuart? Well, it was your idea to give them to Stuart, not mine. But you could have stopped me. What for? Yeah, well, what for? Stuart, stay out of this. I just thought you would stop me from giving them to him so you could have them. They were for you. I didn't want them. Exactly my point. I worked hard to make these cookies and you don't appreciate it. Look, I appreciate the fact that you went to all the trouble to make those cookies for me, but I just ate a big lunch. It's not my fault. If I would have known you were making me cookies, I wouldn't have eaten, but you didn't tell me you were going to make any cookies. Why well, wanted it to be a surprise. Well, it certainly was, wasn't it? You don't even care that I'm disappointed. If it were the other way around, I would eat one for you, whether I wanted to or not, because I love you. That's what marriage is about, doing things you might not like once in a while to make the other person happy. Oh, I see what you mean. You want me to pretend that I want these cookies, even though I don't, so your feelings aren't hurt. Well, sort of. Oh, and that's how you think a husband should be, huh? Full of lies and deceit. Works for me. You're turning things around now. Look, if it will make you happy, I'll eat the damn cookies. Give me the damn cookies. Hey, he cussed. No cussing allowed. No, he's okay as long as he doesn't use it in reference to her. He just said damn cookies, which is acceptable. He can cuss the cookies, he just can't cuss her. But if they get much louder, they could be disqualified. Just forget it. Fine. Wow, if he's not gonna eat the cookies, can I have them? Hey! I'm afraid she could do anything she wants to you. You're not her husband. Thank God for that. Scene four, at Rise, the same living room. Anthony, wanted to talk to you about something. <laughs> yes, what is it? it it's, it's about this whole inheritance thing. Yes. Listen, I know and you know that we can both be pretty stubborn people. We, we can put up with a lot of stuff for a long time. And I have a feeling that we're going to be at this for a long, long time. So I have a proposition for you. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we both team up against Tina and Earl? Oh, come on. No, just hear me out. There's no way those two will stay married. You and I both know it. They're doomed for divorce, so we might as well help them along so we can get the money quicker. We? Yes, yes. If, if we work together as a team, we can get them into a fight, gather all the evidence, and then split the money. We, we could be vacationing in Rio by next Sunday. What do you say? Stuart, you're crazy. Besides, I think there's something in the contract that says we can't do that. Come on, man. Why do you want to drag this out? It, it could be decades, years even. Do you really want to stay with Justine that long? I don't know that I want to stay and put up with Patsy that long if I don't have to. Stuart, how can we split the money when only one couple is allowed to inherit it? Well, I got that all figured out. See, one of us will forfeit, and then the winner will give half to the other. And which couple do you think should forfeit? Oh, I want to be fair, so I'll let you and Justine do it. Uh, no. Oh, why not? Because it's a stupid idea. How do I know that after Justine and I forfeit, you and Patsy won't just keep all the money? Come on, man. We're cousins. I wouldn't do that to my family. This whole plan is about kicking your brother-in-law out of the game. Yeah, but see, that, that's different. Stuart, the answer is no. But come on, at least think about it, please. No. <sighs> Did you talk to him? Yeah. And? I don't think he'll go for it. Why not? I don't know, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. 
You just didn't try hard enough. If he wants to be that way, fine. I'll break up Tina and Earl by myself, and then we'll break up Anthony and Justine. I just need to figure out a good way to do it. Okay. Are you ready to go to the movies? Yes. Okay. Let me just call Daryl and let him know we're ready. Oh, no. Your brother is not going to the movies with us. No way, no how. Not after what happened last time. Oh, come on. If he falls asleep, I'll wake him up before he starts snoring. He's not going. But if he don't go, we'll have to pay for our own popcorn. So what? Last time he bought our popcorn, he also ate our popcorn. So it doesn't make no difference. Come on, I promised. Well, you'll just have to unpromise him. <sighs> hey, how are you two getting along? It's great. Oh, that's too bad. Hey, where are you going? Shopping. Can we get a ride? Our car broke down. Gee, I'd love to, but my mother's picking me up and there's only room for two in her car. Come on, kids, let's go. Lying hussy. We'll just get the driver to take us. Oh, I hate it when we do that. He makes us sit in the back seat and he listens to everything we say. Stu, everybody listens to everything we say. Hell, we've been videotaped and audio taped and watched over since we've been in this damn place. So what the hell difference is that stupid driver gonna make? Where are you going? Uh, I just have to buy some things, that's all. Can you give us a ride? What's wrong with your car? It broke down. Where are you going? To the movies at the mall. Well, that's, that's kind of out of my way. Come on. Why don't you have your driver take you? He makes us sit in the back seat. Well, do you have any money to pay me for gas? See, I don't get paid till next Friday, but I can get it to you then. Sure, just like all those other times I loaned you money. I'm sorry, Pat, but I can't keep helping you out. And it's not like you're gonna see going to some place important. It's just the movies. Why didn't you go out with Tina? She just left. What difference does it make? You just didn't want to go with her, did you? You waited until she left, didn't you? You're avoiding her. Are you guys fighting? No, we're not fighting. I just know there's something in that contract that says you can't avoid your wife. Stu, I'll be right back. I'm going to go look in all them papers and see if it says anything about it. Maybe they can be disqualified. those kids quiet. They're just playing. Well, they're giving me a headache. Why do I have to be so mean? I'm not being mean. I just think that they should teach their kids some manners. Now, wait a minute. You've never been around any kids long enough to judge whether our kids are good or not. He's right, Earl. I can tell you that their kids are pretty well behaved compared to most. He broke my guitar. This is a $600 guitar. James. Calm down. We'll get it fixed. You can't fix this. James, I can't believe you did that. Go to your room. 
Clara, why don't you go play outside? What did you do that for? Did you see what he did? Yes, but you didn't have to yell at him like that. What, oh, what am I supposed to do, whisper? The boy did something wrong. I need to let him know it and let him know in a strong, forceful voice so he gets it. You hurt his feelings. He's lucky that's all I heard. Well, if that is well-behaved, then I don't want any children. I can't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. Come on, you were a child once. Oh, no, I wasn't. I was never allowed to be a child. Maybe that's your problem. I'm sorry about that, Earl. We'll pay for it. Justine, you, you let the kids get, a, get away with murder. You're spoiling them rotten. They're turning out to be little brats, and quite frankly, I'm ashamed of them. When they grow up, they're not going to know the difference between right and wrong, and you're still going to be doing everything for them. I thought I heard yelling in here. Ah, uh, just no. Where do you think you're going? Well, I, I thought I would go down to the local pub for a bit. Well, you thought wrong. What do you mean I thought wrong? I had to know what I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking pretty right. Well, you're wrong. You're not thinking right. Now sit your butt down. Come on, Pat. I gotta have a drink. All this get along, no fighting, be faithful stuff is making me crazy. Sit your... You're not going anywhere. Okie dokie, cupcake. Why do you put up with her bossing you around like that? Well, she's not bossing me around. I decided to stay here on my own. You know all the expensive booze is right here anyway. That's not true. You just don't have a backbone. You can just keep your opinions to yourself, little Miss Pris. Patsy, why don't you show him a little respect? Why should she respect him? I mean, look at him. So he's not the most sophisticated man around, or the best looking man around, or the most intelligent, but that still doesn't give you the right to treat him like he's your slave. I don't. He can do whatever he wants anytime he wants. Isn't that right, Stuart? Uh, that's right. I can. Right, dear? M may I say something? No. Marriage is a partnership. It's like a business. In some businesses, one partner makes all the decisions. In others, the work is divided between the two. What makes the business successful is not who does what, but whether the two partners have the same goal for the business and agree on how to obtain that goal. I think that we're all under a lot of tension, and since we can't fight with our spouses, we're taking everything out on other family members. So you're a psychologist now, are you? No, but I think that's what we all need. Scene two, the living room. How are things with you today, Anthony? Okay, except Justine isn't talking to me. That doesn't disqualify us, does it? No, no disagreements are allowed. But to be expected in relationships, they just can't be too severe. What happened? Why isn't she speaking to you? I forgot. You forgot why she's not speaking to you? No, I forgot her birthday. Oh. Justine, Justine, how do you expect us to work anything out if we don't communicate? Come on, Justine, I didn't really forget your birthday. I was just testing you to make sure you, you didn't forget. Come on, let me make it up to you. I'll get some balloons, I'll pick you a cake. Well. I'll buy you a cake, uh, but I'll put the candles on by hand. Look, I guess it was all the things I've been going through lately. What was your excuse last year? Uh, I can't remember. And the year before that? And the year before that? Look, with the money we're going to inherit, I'll buy you a thousand birthday cakes and a hundred of those funny pointy hats and the blowy things to come on i think it's pretty unfair of you to be mad at me i'm so busy working constantly to pay all the bills and you don't appreciate it all you care about is the fact that i forgot your birthday oh and what i do doesn't matter at all huh i work too just because i make less money than you doesn't mean i do nothing but have fun all day well Nora, can you believe him it's not like i ask for a lot i, I don't ask for diamonds or even flowers or candy just for him to remember for once how often does he forget your birthday? Just about every year. Well, he forgets your birthday every year? That's right, every year. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I know. We've been together for 14 years. You'd think he remember by now. Oh, no, no, I meant it's unbelievable that after 14 years you expected something different from him. Whose side are you on? Nobody's. I can never figure out what Women are like Rubik's cubes. When you figure one side of them out, you look on the other side that you'd figured out previously is all jumbled up again. 
for someone so intelligent. She can be so demanding, so unreasonable sometimes. I don't know what happened. She used to be well, different. She, Justine makes such a big deal out of everything. I can't understand why. You know, they did a poll once and they asked thousands and thousands of married people all kinds of questions. And you know what they found was the most common element in the couples with the most satisfying marriages? What? Good sex? No. Lots of money? No. I know. Living in different states? No, no, no. That wasn't it either. The one thing that was the same in all the marriages was that, was that they all had low expectations. Oh. Hello? Yeah, Bill. Uh, just a second. Yeah, that's good. What was her name? Okay, I got her right here. Age 46, two kids at home. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. Thanks. That's a pretty cool looking gadget you've got there. What's it called? Uh, it's a laptop computer. Where have you been? It's the very latest one they got out. Cost me a pretty penny too, but it's worth it. I bet you can do a lot with that thing. I sure can. I got my whole schedule in here with all my appointments, my client's contact information. And if I punch a few keys, this thing will calculate the lowest and the highest premiums for all the different insurance companies I'm contracted with. And we'll also calculate how much they can earn on certain annuities. Right here is where I keep all my notes. Every little bit of information helps. I have an appointment with Mrs. Allen tomorrow at nine. And right here, I have all my notes on it. I met with her last on February 12th. She has a daughter named Susie who likes to skateboard. And they have a German shepherd named Ralph who doesn't like to skateboard. Susie still can't understand why. And then I can also download all of this information into my Palm Pilot for when I don't have my laptop with me. I think you should get your money back. With all the stuff that thing can do and you still forgot your wife's birthday? How valuable is it really? Scene three, the living room. Well, 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 what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm helping Tina with the laundry. My goodness, what happened? Did all the servants die? The world must be coming to an end. Miss Pris is doing her own laundry when she has a house full of servants. For your information, she always does our laundry. We don't trust anyone else to do it. The servants would probably shrink everything. You can have the servants do your laundry, that's just fine for your clothes, but ours needs special treatment. Oh, that's right. My clothes aren't as good as yours and Miss Pris's clothes. Oh, well, it's the truth. We paid $500 for this dress alone. That's probably more than your whole wardrobe. And you think that's a good thing? Hmm, let's see now. You're going to be stuck inside all day, hand washing and hanging $500 dresses, and I'm gonna spend my day on my machine washable $5 sundress. Oh, yeah, you're the smart one, all right. Uh-oh. What is it? You snag a $1,000 sweater? No. What is that? It's nothing. Let me see it. Well, what have we here? It's a girl's phone number. Pat, it's nothing. This lady came into the store the other day wanting to buy a piano, but we don't sell pianos. I took her name in case I heard of anyone who was selling one. She's probably 90 years old. Oh, I gotta, gotta get the clothes out of the dryer. Laundry day, huh? Yes. Make sure you check all those pockets real good. One time I accidentally washed an ink pen with my clothes and everything turned out blue. Patsy, I know how to wash clothes, thank you. <laughs> Earl's always leaving things in his pockets. Well, what was that? I don't know. It might have been important. Shouldn't you check and make sure? Why do you care? You know how upset he gets at every little thing. If you throw something away that he wanted to keep and he's going to get all mad and rant and rave and I just don't feel like hearing it. What is it? It's a phone number. A girl's phone number. It is? Oh my. Girl, he has a thing on the side. Oh, I don't think so. Do you think so? Absolutely. Why else would he have a phone number of a girl in his pocket? Let me see that. Nancy. Hmm. I don't know a Nancy. You better nip it in the bud, girl. Once a cheat, always a cheat, I say. Just like my ex-husband, Harold. You can't put up with that. 
If you let him get away with this now, he'll just keep on getting away with it. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but it is strange. You have to jump, girl. Don't let him treat you like a rug. Walk all over you. We're almost done. I just got a few more loads. Earl, whose phone number is this? Where did you find that? In your pocket. In my pocket? How did it get in there? Why do you act so surprised? You act like I wasn't supposed to find it. It's just, uh, it's just some lady who wanted to buy a piano. Yeah, right. You don't even sell pianos at your store. I know. What was this girl's number doing in your pocket? I just stuck it in there while I was at work. Or while he was at a hotel. Patsy, I should have known. Who is Nancy? I don't know. Just some lady. She came into the store looking for a piano. She said to call her if I heard of anyone who was selling one. Why are you always so jealous? Don't you trust me? Of course I trust you. It's just that... Well, you're an, an attractive man, and I know that a lot of women probably come on to you, and I know how tempting it must be. I mean, you probably get tired of me. I mean... Hey, look, it's just a lady that wanted a piano. That's all. I promise. Did I say something to upset you? No. Well, I can tell you're upset. I said I wasn't. You're lying to me. Please don't lie to me. Can we please drop it? Earl, if you try to hide it from me, it only been, builds up the tension between us. If there's tension here, it's only because you won't drop it. But then nothing gets resolved. It just lingers on and on. Okay, fine. Look, I don't like how jealous you get. It is a little irritating. There's nothing for you to worry about, okay? That's why I was upset, because you get jealous so easily over nothing. Can we just let it go? I don't understand. If, if it were me and I would feel, if it were me, I would feel loved. It would show me that you care if you were a little jealous. You're right. I can see your point. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're jealous. I just think that sometimes you get a little too jealous. That's all. I'm sorry you're mad at me. I didn't mean to make you mad. What should I do next time I feel jealous? I thought we were going to drop this. Okay, I just want to make sure I don't upset you like this again. I'm not upset. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm upset, but it's not over you being jealous. It's over you not dropping it. But this all started when I asked you about the phone number. If I hadn't been so jealous, none of this would ever happen. Uh, look, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to finish the laundry, then I have to work on that song. So do we have to talk about this now? Okay, I'm sorry. I won't bug you anymore. Just... Just answer me one question and I'll leave you alone. Okay. How can I express my feelings without upsetting you? Feelings about what? <laughs> when I get jealous. The only reason I get jealous is because I love you so much and I'm terrified of losing you. All I want is a little reassurance once in a while that you love me. That's all. So what's the best way for me to do that without bugging you? Just tell me. <laughs> But when I do that, you get mad at me. Okay. I'll, I'll try harder not to get upset anymore, okay? Now I feel like you're just brushing me off. Look, I said I would try harder, okay? I'm doing the best that I can. Now, can I please get back to what I was doing here? But you never answered my question. Yes, I did. I said to just tell me when you needed reassurance, and from now on, I will try harder to not get upset with you. Do you love me? Yes. It's hard to believe you love me when you're always upset. Anytime we have a conversation about us, you get upset. It's because you drag it out forever. Only because I don't feel like it ever gets fixed. If I thought you were truly listening and everything was worked out, I would leave you alone. But you never do that. You just want to end the conversation as quickly as you can so that you can get away from it. Of course I do, because you are so irritating. I never have any peace around you. You're always making a big deal out of everything and rambling on and on forever, saying the same things over and over. Now I'm going to leave before we get into a huge fight and lose our inheritance. Willie, did you hear that fight? It's Wildemar, and yes, I heard everything. Well, ain't you gonna do something about it? It was within regulations. There was no profanity, no violence, and they didn't get too loud. Nothing to cause it to lose the game. Darn. 
that fight wasn't good enough. Come on. I'm afraid not now, if you'll excuse me. Damn it, fine. She got that upset over a little phone number. Hmm. Stuart, get in here and bring me my purse. What? Sit down. What for? You're going to write me a love letter. Okay, but shouldn't I write it myself? Shut up, Stu. This isn't for me. It's not? You want me to write a love letter to another woman? Pat, I don't know what's come over you, but I like it. <laughs> it's not to a woman. It's to a man. Huh? Wait a minute now. Just I write, dear Earl. Dear Earl? My brother-in-law? Mm -hmm. Now, Pat, you know I'd do just about anything for you, but I draw a line with guys. Look, you nitwit. I want to plant a love letter to Earl from some other woman so that Tina will find it and think he's cheating on her. They'll get into a big fight, break up, and they'll be out of the game. Earl knows my handwriting, so I can't write it. Oh, I get it now. Now, back to where I was. Dear Earl, I have missed you so. I can't wait to see you again. Last night, I felt like I was in heaven. What you doing there? Oh, uh, we're writing a letter to my son, Joe. What's the lipstick for? Um. And the perfume. Hmm. I, I thought your son's name was Joe. Mm hmm Yeah, it is Earl Joe. We named him after his uncle. Ah, I don't buy that. You don't? No, I don't. Have you forgotten that all the rooms are bugged? Have you tried, Ray? Shut up, Stu. And I also saw what you did with that phone number. You can't do things like that. You'll be disqualified. Now, I'd like to be fair, so I'm going to give you one chance. But it was already there. He took it out, and I just put it back where it was in the first place. I was always taught to put things back, you know. It was still tampering. I'm warning you that if you try to tamper with the relationships of Earl and Tina, or Justine and Anthony, with this letter or anything else like this, you'll be automatically disqualified. I warn you, Mrs. Blake, I'm watching you like a hawk. And if any questionable evidence comes up regarding the other two couples, you will be who I automatically suspect. Hey, Pat, how do you spell heaven? Shut up, Stu. Scene four at Rise, the living room. Why don't you take a break for a while? It would probably help. I want to get this done tonight. Tennis blank, tennis ball, tennis court. Tennis racket. Ah, yes, that fits. Thank you, Patsy. Come on, Earl, you got this whole big place to play your stupid guitar. Go pick another room. I'm trying to hear this. Jacob is about to propose to his dead wife's twin sister, only he doesn't know it's really his dead wife who isn't really dead. Patsy, just shut up. Why do you waste your time watching that stuff anyway? And you have a television in your room. What's wrong with it? Or did you take it to the pawn shop and sell it to buy a beer or something? No, I didn't take it to the pawn shop. That's right. We took the stereo. Shut up, Stu. Don't you know, Earl, this TV's closer to the kitchen? And it's bigger. How big do you need it? Give up. We're not leaving. You might fight with your wife. Or cheat on her, and we don't want to miss it. I don't know why you're here anyway. Nobody in the family likes you. You don't deserve any part of the inheritance. We all know that everybody always liked you better. You don't need to rub it in my face. Dad only wanted a son anyway. He didn't care about having a daughter. He probably would have sold me off to the first band of gypsies that passed by the house's house if he could have. You're wrong, Pat. He wouldn't have charged them anything for you. Hmm. Not true. He just never cared about having a daughter as ungrateful and self-centered and dishonest as you. Ungrateful? I never got anything to be grateful about. You always had everything handed to you. The only time they ever noticed me was when I did something wrong. Which was all the time. At least you didn't have to be perfect all the time. They expected you to be a screw up. I had to be perfect. If I got more than you, it wasn't because I asked for it. I never wanted any part of this family. I left when I was 17, don't you remember? I was out on my own. You, on the other hand, you stayed as long as you could until they threw you out. I don't blame anyone for not liking you or that lazy husband of yours who hasn't worked in what it's, what's it been, three years? Or. Well, you don't have much of a job yourself. A cashier in a music store? You work in a cafeteria. At least I admit that's my job. 
When somebody asks me what I do, I tell them straight up. I work in a cafeteria that I sling slop for a living. When somebody asks you, you make it sound like you're touring with Eminem instead of the truth, which is you're a clerk at a discount music store in downtown Los Angeles with all the teeny boppers that have more piercings than they do brain cells. And you've written two songs, both of which have never been heard by anyone outside of us here in this room who are sick and tired of hearing them. But nobody has the guts to tell you that but me. You don't even got a demo. Not that it would do you that good anyway. Thanks for your support. You're all the same. You've never been there for me and you never will be. Look, why don't you both agree that you have a shitty family and leave it at that? Hey now, wait a minute. Did you forget that I'm part of that family? No, I didn't forget. Earl, you're not the only one who doesn't get any support around here. Come on, people. Let's all try to get along. There's so much negative energy. It's not good for a person. No, Patsy. You have such a temper. You should try to work on that. I always say that a person's character can be measured by the size of the thing that upsets them. Really? You stay out of this. I am sick and tired of you watching every little thing I do and getting in my business. It's bad enough that you have to butt in when I'm having a discussion with my husband, but you got no right to butt in when I'm having a discussion with my brother. Now, I don't remember reading nothing in the rules that says I can't knock you on your ass, little man. It said I can't fight with my husband, but it sure as hell didn't say anything about not fighting with you. So that means I can kick your- Patsy, let's try not to get on the man's bad side. Oh, it's probably a little too late for that. I can understand your frustration, Patsy, with my having to watch all of you all the time. But it's really a small inconvenience when you stop to think about what you could possibly win. You could be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. And if you end up winning, don't you think, in retrospect, you'd regret doing me bodily harm? Can't say that I would. Oh, here she is, Earl. Here's your support. President and only member of Earl Lindsay's fan club. Why do you need us when you have the love and support of Miss Pris here? I don't appreciate you calling me that. You don't? Well, I'm sorry. I'll just find you a new nickname. How about Miss Fake? Because there's not a thing on or about you that's real. You get your hair from Clairol, your face from Mary Kay. You got fake boobs, fake nails, and fake personality to go with them. I can't stand that woman. How much longer do we have to put up with her? With her temper, probably not much longer. I hope not. Earl, were you able to get Saturday off? No, I couldn't. Why not? Saturday's our busiest day and there was nobody to cover for me. Just tell them your mother died or something. My mother's been dead for five years, they know that. See? So? Who cares? They're just workers anyway. What do you mean by that? I work there. Am I just a worker too? Of course not. You're just working temporarily until you make it big. Make what big? Well, it certainly couldn't be his ego. It's already big. How do you know the people I work with aren't working just temporarily like me? Oh, you can just tell. Those people are the kind that will always work for the rest of their lives. What's wrong with working? I'll tell you what's wrong with working. It gets you tired. All I'm saying is that there are people who stay at the bottom and never amount to anything. Oh, let's not get off the subject. Now, do you want the day off or don't you? You haven't spent hardly any time with me lately. You, you won't do anything for me. All I'm asking is for one little day. I always spend time with you. What do you want us to be joined at the hip? Hey, Wildemar, it, it sounds like they're fighting over there. It's just a small disagreement. The discussion is within the legal boundaries of the contest. Oh, come on. Can't you guys cuss or something? Throw something at each other. <laughs> no, I said at each other. Scene five, the same living room at Rice. Hey, Justine, you know, I've been looking at the layout of your father's restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, and if we rearranged a few things, we could fit at least three more tables in there. What do you think? Well, I try hard not to. Clutters, clutters the brain. Seriously, more tables would be more customers, which means more profits. Dad won't like it if you go around changing things on him. You know how old-fashioned he is. If we do manage to get the funds to take over the business, we can't go around changing things. He won't sell it to us. I do like those tablecloths we picked out, though. They make the place look uh, you know, a lot more bright and cheerful. Yeah, that's the idea. And it's just a few more tables. He won't mind. I don't know. Did you finish balancing the checkbook? Yeah. And how much is left? Five. 500, that's great. No, just five. You have a total of $5 left in the account. 
Oh. Gee, that's an awful lot of money. What do you think we ought to do with it? I don't know. We could pay off a mortgage or use it for our, our retirement. Justine, you're always thinking practical. You know what? I'm feeling reckless. Let's squander it on a night on the town. What do you say? Mm, I say that $5 won't even get us to town. You're right. Well, as soon as this is all over, we'll be able to pay everything off and start all over. Well, what if we don't win? <sighs> oh, come on. Of course, we're gonna, we'll, we'll win. We have to win. We've got a much better chance than Earl or Patsy. Patsy's like a bomb. It's about to go off any second. And Earl? Earl doesn't even want to be here. He hates having to live under the same roof as me. Why can't he let the past go? I don't know. He's stubborn, I guess. Let me look at that. I was sure we had more money than that. Wait a minute. You spent $300 on clothes? Yes. I had to get the kids some things. Well, no wonder we never have any money left over at the end of the week. Why'd you buy them new clothes again for? We didn't you just buy them a whole bunch of stuff last month. They needed them. They have plenty of clothes. They are already starting to outgrow most of them. And most of Clara's clothes are stained or have holes in them. Did you hear that comment Tina made the other day? No, come on, don't tell me you care what Tina thinks. Oh, it's not just what she thinks, it's everyone, especially the other kids at school. James is starting to get picked on. Gee, gee, it's not like I squandered the money at the racetrack or something. And what about you? Part of the reason we don't have any money is because all the money you spend going out to eat. You spent almost $400 just last month on restaurants. Most of those were on clients. I don't have an office I can meet with them at, and it's a lot easier to make a sale when there isn't the distractions I have at home. I ended up making several thousand dollars, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't spend a little money on their dinner. Well, anyway, we need to figure something out. We're going to start getting behind again if we don't either cut back or increase our income. I don't see how we can cut much more out. We already canceled the cable, the newspaper subscription, the gym membership. If only we had taken that job offer. Don't start with that again. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's just that it was such a great offer. I can't believe you passed it up. It never would have worked. You never gave it a fair chance. We wouldn't be having any of these financial problems if you would have taken that job. It couldn't have been that bad. You would rather I take a job that I hate even more than the one I have now just so we can pay a few more bills? A few more bills? That job would have paid all of our bills three times over. I would never ask you to take a job if I knew that you wouldn't be happy with it. I'm not happy with the one I have now. You know that. And if I had an opportunity to make that much money, I would take it no matter what because we need the money. And I would have learned to like it until I found something better and got us out of the hole we're in. But that's just the kind of person I am, and I guess I shouldn't expect that much from you. Fine. Why don't you go out and get a second job, oh great martyr? I would get a job on weekends if you would stay home with the kids. No, most of my appointments are on the weekends. Why don't you get a second job during the week then? I can't get a second job. I need all my mental energy for this job I have. If I tried to take on another job, I wouldn't be able to function as effectively in the job I have. I wouldn't be able to make half the sales I'm making now if I had to work another job. So what would be the point? Your job is so unpredictable anyway. One week you bring home a great big check, then sometimes you don't have enough for weeks. It's so hard to budget like that. That's the way it is in sales. You know that. Maybe you should have married someone in a different line of work, someone who's more stable. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? That's not what I said. You don't have to say it. I am so tired of this. Tired of what? All this tension, all this tension between us. I know you are too. I know that I'm 90% of the reason for your migraines. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's more like 85% actually. <laughs> I'm starting to think that this whole inheritance isn't worth it. There's no guarantee we're going to win anyway. We have enough problems without having to walk on pins and needles when we argue so we don't get too loud. I know what you mean. I'm tired of fighting. The stress, the tension. I, I just want some peace for once. To have a normal day, free from stress and anxiety. It seems that any time we get around each other, there, there, there is some problem. And it's worse being here because it's not like I can never get away. I've got Wildemar breathing down my neck all the time. It's just the finances. As soon as this inheritance is settled, everything will be fine. It's not just the finances. We fight about everything, the kids, the house. So you're saying you want a divorce or what? I don't know. Maybe that would be best. But I would hate to give up on the... Yes. 
That's all you care about, isn't it? That's the only reason you're still with me. The money. Justine, that is not true. The real estate is important too. <laughs> Just kidding. Where, wait, where are you going? Upstairs to pack. Pack? Yes. Yes, that's what people do when they leave. When will you be back? I don't know if I will be back. Don't say that too loud. Look, look, we've been drifting apart for a long time, Anthony. It's obvious you don't love me anymore. That's not true. Hey, just saw Justine. She looked pretty mad. She was not mad. You sure? She looked pretty mad. Are you mad? What do you want, Stuart? I just want to see if you guys broke up yet. Where, where is she going? Grocery shopping. Does she usually take her suitcase along when she goes shopping? You know how flimsy those grocery store bags are. Well, that's the most expensive fight you'll ever have. No, wait a minute. We didn't raise our voices or use any bad language, and she can still come back as long as she's back before I go to sleep tonight. Oh, she's not coming back. You lost. <laughs> Stu, I'm going to go find Wildemore and tell him. She'll be back, I hope. Scene six, a few hours later. Hey cousin, wanna play cards? I'm not really in the mood right now. Come on, Wildemar won't play with me. He says I cheat. It would take your mind off things. Stuart, don't you have a beer to drink or something? No, you got one? No. Man, don't offer then. I wasn't offering. Oh, well, do you wanna play or not? No. Come on, please. Okay, fine, one game. Cool. What are we playing, poker? No, I always lose at that. How about rummy? No, that's too complicated for me. What about 99? Don't you have to do a lot of adding and subtracting in that game? Yes. Then no. What do you want to play then? I'll let you pick, crazy eight or go fish. Uh, go fish, I guess. Great. You got any twosies? No. You got to tell me to go fish. Go fish. You got any sevens? Nope, go fish. So where's Patsy? Taking it out. No wonder you're in such a good mood. I'm always in a good mood. You got any ninesies? No, go fish. You got any sevens? Darn. She's sleeping, huh? Yeah. Do you have a hard day of watching TV or something? Nah, I think the sleeping pills I put in her lemonade might have had something to do with it. What? Don't worry, it wasn't enough to kill her, I don't think. I just wanted her to get a little rest. You're just an attentive husband. I know. Stuart, can I ask you a question? You just did. Okay, well, can I ask you another question? Ah, uh, you just did. Okay, can I ask you two questions then? Sure. Do you love Patsy? Oh, uh, I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it might get me disqualified. Uh, it's your turn. You get to go again. I thought you knew how to play this game. Give me a break. It's been a while. I haven't played this game since I was a kid. Do you have any jacks? Go fish, buddy. See, that's your problem, Tony. You grew up. Who told you to do that? Well, come to think of it, lots of people did. In fact, Justine still tells me that. Well, just because somebody tells you to do something doesn't mean you gotta do it. Why don't you tell yourself that? Patsy's always telling you what to do and you always do whatever she says. Why? How can you stand it? You guys argue even more than Justine and I. What does Patsy ever do for you? Got any forsies? Well, Justine can get kind of mean too, you know. Got any queens? Yeah, but I stand up to her. And you think that's a good thing? Well, it's better than having no dignity like you. Huh, dignity's overrated. Now, I think you're just trying to talk me into leaving Patsy so you can have the money. No, that's not it. Just forget it. It's no big deal if that's the way you want your marriage to be. Hey, I don't need to be the boss to feel like the man. People have enough struggles in their life. Why do they want to add a power struggle to the mess? Well, not me. Patsy thinks she's in control, and I let her think that. It's fine with me. Got any threesies? Go fish. Look what standing up to Justine got you. She's gone. She'll be back. Do you really want her to come back? Of course I do. 
You sure about that? Okay, there are times when I wonder why I put up with things. Is this what life is about? Is this all there is? Sometimes I look around and wonder, is this my life? I didn't know it was going to be like this. But then I think about the kids and realize that even if I thought about leaving, I just can't. I have an obligation. Oh, I don't like obligations. That's why I never had any. Patsy's not an obligation? Nah, she takes care of herself. See, I'm used to the way Pat is. Although, I gotta admit, being in this inheritance situation has made things pretty hard for me lately. But I do love my wife. You, you hear that, Wildemar? But you were really, you really asking me that question or were you asking it about yourself, huh? Well, we're in this little contest, so I guess we'll just have to see which one of us can tough it out the longest. And whoever does will be a rich man. Yeah. Whose turn is it anyway? I think it's yours. You got any spades? Nice try, but you can't do that. Ah, uh, sorry. Didn't think you were paying attention. You got any sixties? Go fish. What if I'm able to hold out and I do win the inheritance? Will it be worth it? What kind of question is that? Will it be worth it? I mean, is my sanity worth all the money? Will I be able to enjoy the money if I'm in a mental institution? Probably not. But Justine would be able to afford a very high class mental institution for you. This is true. Well, look, Stuart, I think I'm going to resign this game. You win. Yes, I won in your face. I'm going to see if I can't get a hold of Justine. Maybe she's calmed down by now. Uh, good luck, buddy. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you get good luck, that would mean the chance of me winning going down. Scratch that. Hey. I'm sorry I haven't called you. It's, it's, it's been difficult trying to sneak around with Patsy. You, you know how she is. No, of course I'm going to see you. Yes, yes. We, we, we just can't let her find out about it. That's all. Of course I love you. Look, she, she's sleeping now, and it looks like she's going to be out for a while, and I, I thought I'd take this opportunity to see you, but, but I don't have a lot of time. Meet me at that place I told you about. It's right around the corner from here. And I'm bringing you something special. <laughs> I love you lots. Wildemar, come quick. I just overheard Stuart on the phone. I think he's having an affair. I'm serious. Hurry up. He's going to go meet her. Scene seven. At Rise, a restaurant. Hey there. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, just having a cup of coffee. Can I buy you a cup? That would be nice. Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, one more coffee, please. Nothing bad. What are you up to? Nothing. Just thought I'd come here to try to relax for a little bit. I got great coffee here. They make it with quietness. What are you doing here? Just need to get away. Yeah, me too. Tina drives me nuts. I don't know how much more I can take of this. She's always wanting to know what I'm doing, where I'm going, who I'm with. She gets mad anytime I go anywhere and, and don't take her. I had to sneak away while she was in the shower just to come here. I'm sure she'll track me down soon. I know. How do you handle that? It's not easy. She's still jealous of me, isn't she? Oh yeah, she definitely is. I thought so. She's always looking at me funny and asking me all kinds of questions. It's like she's trying to catch me in a lie or something. At first I thought it had something to do with the inheritance. My God, it's been years. What is she worried about? Maybe I shouldn't be sitting here with you. She might walk in and think something's going on. I really don't care. You don't care about starting a fight and losing the inheritance? Yeah, I did, really didn't want to do this whole thing in the first place. We've all turned into a bunch of fools over this money. It's not worth it to me. Yeah, me neither. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we really could use the money, but Anthony and I were constantly on the verge of fighting, and I just I can't take it anymore. I find myself snapping at the kids over tiny little things. I've become this monster and I don't like it. Anytime me and Anthony are together, the tension in the air is, is so thick you could cut it with a knife. And that's not all I like to cut with a knife. <laughs> Sounds a lot like my relationship with Tina. But what do we do? 
Anthony and I just had another big fight. I just packed and left. Yep. Maybe. I don't know. I just I couldn't stand it anymore. I packed my things and walked out. Maybe I'll go to my parents for a while and think things over. I'm sorry to hear that you guys are having problems. Oh. You and Tina might have a chance at the money now. Any day Patsy's sure to lose her temper and then do something to Stuart. I don't know if me and Tina will stay in much longer anyway. But I would hate to see Patsy win. So you're thinking about leaving too? I don't know if I can take it with Tina much longer. She's so insecure and she's so self-centered and superficial. She's, I wish she was more like you. Tina can be unreasonably jealous a lot of times, but I have to admit that she has a right to be jealous over you. What do you mean? Justine, after all these years, I've still thought about you from time to time. You have? I can't help it. Justine, what happened with us? We, we had so much fun together. Oh, you know, it, it would never have worked between us. We were two completely different people. We want different things. We believe differently about everything. I know, but we had some good times together, didn't we? Remember when we used to play at the Cecilia's and on all those late night jam sessions we used to have? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. But classic, Bach and classic rock? I mean, strange combination. Sometimes we sounded pretty good together. Sometimes isn't good enough. Don't you play the piano anymore? No, no, I haven't played in years. Why not? I just don't have time for it. It's too bad. You're so talented. Well, that may be true, but I found out a long time ago that my typing skills are worth a lot more money than my musical skills. But there is still hope for you. You shouldn't let your circumstances dictate your life. Back when you were waiting tables for your dad and entertaining the customers on the piano, there was a smile on your face that I haven't seen in years. You should do what you want, what's in your heart, not what you think you're supposed to do. Playing the piano is not something you can just stop doing and pick right up again. You're rusty. Not nearly as good as I used to be, and there's no use trying unless I had the time to dedicate to practicing several hours a day, which I don't. I haven't given up on my dream and you shouldn't either. No, it's not like that. I made a choice. My family is important to me. They need me. There's no way I could do everything I want and be there for the children. That's one big difference between me, me and you. You really don't want to settle down, Earl. I don't understand why you ever got married at all. You're so, uh, well, not cut out to be a husband. And Anthony is, I suppose? Yes. Well, obviously something's wrong with him if you're thinking of leaving. And that's what's so hard about the whole thing. Anthony is just what I want in a man. He's intelligent, supportive, he's trusting, he makes me laugh. We have the same goals. We don't exactly always agree on some things like, some issues on how to raise the kids, but he's a good father and overall, we're good together, I think. There's just something that happens between us. You love him? Honestly? I'm not sure anymore. But it doesn't matter anyway. I've got the kids to think about. I wouldn't break up their home just because I didn't love him. That, that would be selfish. But it has come to the point where our fighting is affecting the kids. They can see how miserable we are and it's making them upset. You are too selfless, Justine. For once in your life, you should think of yourself. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. But Earl, you really shouldn't be so bitter with Anthony. He didn't take me away from you. It would have never worked out between us, and you know that. I mean, you're a great guy. 
but you're just not right for me and I'm not right for you. It was already over between us. If it hadn't been Anthony, some other guy would have eventually came along and it's not fair to hold all this anger toward him. What anger? I'm not so angry at that backstabbing ass. Well, good. I'm glad that's settled. Where are the kids now? Visiting my parents for a while. Maybe I should give things a, a little more time. How long have you been this unhappy? Uh, let's see, you know, we've been married 14 years. It's been about 14 years. Have they all been that bad? <sighs> no. Justine, can I ask you a question? What? Is there as much chemistry between you two as there was between us? What kind of question is that? I just remember how much attraction there was between us. Come on, Justine. He pays more attention to that computer of his than he does you. He doesn't seem to love you either. I can't argue with you there. The relationship with Anthony couldn't possibly be as passionate as ours was. We were kids. Everything's more exciting and passionate when you're young. I think you're just trying to rationalize the fact that you have a meaningless relationship. Look, I'm sorry. It's just, it's frustrating to me to see such a sweet, beautiful, intelligent woman being treated the way that you are. And you want a second chance to show me how good you could treat me? Is that it? We had a good thing for what it was at the time, but it was never meant to be anything else. You're just lonely right now, like me. Maybe in another life, huh? Maybe. Thanks for the coffee. I better get going. I was about to go anyway, I'll walk you out. I don't know what you're looking for, honey, but you won't get better service than me. What can I get you to drink? Uh, how much is a root beer float? It's two ninety-five. Okay, I'll take one of those and a coffee. Okay, handsome. You want a cherry in your float? Does it cost extra? No. Then yes. I got a motto. If it's free, it's for me. I'll bring right out. Hurry up. Hurry up. We need to get there before he does. Do you see him? No. Okay. Let's just sit over there in the corner so he won't notice us. What can I get you? Why are you wearing sunglasses inside? Uh, the light hurts our eyes. No. Oh. I thought it might, might be, I thought it might be my beauty blinding you. Would you hands the fellas like some coffee? Yes, yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. Yes, coffee, please, and nothing else. Huh. I guess it wasn't them. Okay. Be right back. But we will take those menus. But you say you weren't going to order anything else. I like to browse. Okay, can we browse? Get yourself. There's lots of strange people in this town. Hi, baby! <sighs> Hi, how, how have you been? Oh my God, look at her. Older woman, doesn't he? I ordered you a coffee. Thank you, darling. Here, it's just the way you like it. Thank you, dear. You're always so good to me. What in the world is he doing with that woman? Well, look at the person he married. Good point. But she is ancient. You ready to order? Oh, what do you want? Oh, the coffee's fine. No, we don't want anything else. Thank you. People eat anymore? I have missed you. Why haven't you called? This is sick. Oh, you know how Patsy is. If she found out I was seeing you, she'd kill me. Don't you love me? Of course I do. Are you hearing this, Wildemar? Yes, although I wish I weren't. It's just that Patsy has been really watching me closely lately. Now more never, and I just don't want to make her mad. Stewie, when are you going to leave that woman? Are you paying attention? Yes, yes, I am. Looks as though they'll be disqualified, but I need more than a conversation. Now, not that again. 
What more do you need? Look, Stuart, you promised you call me less and less anymore and you hardly ever come to see me. I miss you. I know, and I miss you too, but Patsy, she, she just, I can't leave her. I'm sorry. I thought I was important to you. You are. Oh, this is disgusting. Do you see this, Wildemar? Yes. Please be patient, okay? Okay. Uh, let's talk about something else. How have you been? Uh, can't complain. Wouldn't do any good anyway. How about you? Great. I heard Patsy's great uncle Clarence passed away. Uh, well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? A person is either dead or, or they aren't. Uh, how can they be not exactly dead? Um, you, uh, it's a long story. I don't want to bore you with the details, but mm. I just want to say I might be inheriting a whole lot of money, and then when I do, I'm going to buy you a great big brand new house and a great big brand new car. Oh, Stuart, you are so good to me. I know. But what I really want for you, from you, is for us to spend some time together. Why don't you just tell Patsy you're going on a camping trip or something, and then you could come spend the weekend with me. Oh, I can't listen to this. Uh, maybe soon. Oh, I almost forgot. I got your surprise. Oh, what is it? What is that? Hey, Wildemar, it looks like an engagement ring. What? Oh, yes, it does, doesn't it? <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. <gasps> this must have cost you a fortune. Well, I, I've been saving up for a long time, and, and you're worth it. See, I had them take my... Anthony, what are you doing here? Ha ha, we caught you. This lady's old enough to be your mother, and here you are giving her... a um, mother's ring? That's because she is my mother. Stewie, who are these people? Your mother? Yes, this is my mom, Ruthie Blake. You, you didn't take... Now, Tony, that's just sick. Why were you sneaking around? Because Patsy and Mom hate each other. Patsy gets so mad any time I go visit Mom, I, I just don't tell her anymore. It's a lot easier than fighting with her. Stuart, who are these people? Mom, um, don't you remember Anthony, Patsy's cousin? <gasps> oh, my goodness, it's been ages. And this is Mr. Wildemar. Nice to meet you. We're sorry to have bothered you, too. It's obvious that nothing is going on here, so I should get back. I'm sorry, Wildemar. I really thought something was going on. See, Mom. It's 10 karat gold, and it's got my birthstone here, so. It's beautiful, son. Act three, scene one, the living room. How are things, Anthony? You know how things are, Wildemar. If Justine isn't back pretty soon, I'm going to lose the inheritance. I really thought she'd be back by now. If Justine doesn't come back, you'll have lost more than just the inheritance. Things used to be pretty, pretty good between us, but for the past several years, Things have been going downhill. Marriage is like buying a home. Once you find the perfect one, you still have to mow the lawn and fix a leaky faucet now and then, or turn into a rundown shack. I'll keep that in mind. Have you heard from Clarence? Yes, he checked in this morning. I spoke with him very briefly. He wasn't sounding very good. When is his procedure scheduled? In two weeks. He's in London right now. He'll see his doctor when he gets back. Why won't he let any of us be there? Well, you know how controversial this kind of thing is. He doesn't want the press finding out. He hasn't given anyone any information. Oh, I thought it was all because he hates us all. That too. Well, I'm still gonna miss him. I'm sure you will. Out of all his family, he spoke rather highly of you. He did? Yes. During the short time I spent with him when he was going over the inheritance rules with me, he mentioned you a few times. Mostly to talk about Elizabeth, though. He still has Aunt Elizabeth's pictures everywhere. He sure did love her. Love isn't a strong enough word. I tried to talk him out of this ridiculous idea. His health isn't the best, I know, but, well, he's a very stubborn man. But I need to make my rounds now. I'll be back shortly. Hello. Can I help you? I'm looking for Mr. Lindsay. Well, we've got a bunch of them here. Which one do you want? Uh, the elderly gentleman, Clarence Lindsay. I'm sorry, he's in London. Is there anything I can do for you? I'm Anthony Lindsay, Clarence's great nephew. 
Good to meet you. I'm Dr. Elsinore, Clarence's personal physician. I just dropped in to see how he was doing. I didn't know doctors still made house calls. It's not really an official visit. I just happened to be in the neighborhood and I thought I'd stop by. Just tell me I was here, would you please? Okay, sure. Hey, listen, doctor, I'm sure you've done your best, but isn't there something more you could do? Radiation treatment, chemotherapy or something? I mean, I know he's old, I'm but- I'm sorry, I'm not sure I know what you mean. The brain tumor he has, of course. Brain tumor? What brain tumor? He doesn't have any brain tumor. He doesn't? Well, about a year ago, he had a growth on his toe, but that's about it. Really? Yes, Clarence is in good health, for his age, of course. He does have difficulty getting around because of the arthritis in his knees and the vision and hearing are failing. And he has a few other minor complaints, but of course, they're all a normal part of aging. Oh, I see. Well, if Clarence isn't here, I'll be going then. I have tea time reserved. I'll tell him you come by. Thank you. Well, all's peaceful in the house today. Wildemar, Dr. Elsinore just came by. Oh, he did. He must have been on his way to the golf course. Wildemar, the doctor said that Clarence did not have any tumor. I don't understand that. Why is he going through with this then? Well, there's probably some misunderstanding. You see, Dr. Elsinore is Clarence's family doctor, but he's been seeing a specialist for the past few months. Oh. I see. Do you have a number for that specialist? No, afraid not. Clarence is very secretive, you know. Oh, sh my anniversary is coming up. I, I ordered some flowers for Justine. I was going to call the florist today to let them know where to deliver them. I wasn't sure whether to have them delivered here or to her work. I guess I'll have to. Have them delivered at my work so all the girls there will be jealous. Justine, you're back. Justine, how wonderful to see you. I'll, I'll just leave you two alone. I've been thinking. I can't let the kids miss out on a chance of a fabulous life just because I hate you. You hate me? That's an awful strong word. An awful strong feeling. I realized it would be very selfish of me to take away their opportunity at part of this inheritance just because of our problems. So it wasn't because you missed me? We can be adults about this and hold off on things until after this inheritance is settled. I missed you. I mean, how long could it take? You missed me? Yes. Really? Yes. Didn't you miss me? Well, a little, maybe. Let me take that for you. You know, you missed out on a lot. Stuart and Patsy almost lost. They did? Well, not exactly. I just thought they did. Oh. Scene two, at Rise in the living room. Where is everybody? Justine and Tina took the kids to the park. Really? I can't believe that Tina and Justine are together. Tina doesn't really like Justine. Why? Justine seems like such a nice girl. Yeah, she is, but Tina's jealous of her. Tina's jealous of your shadow. Is that why the two of you only go out at night? No, they only go out at night because she's half vampire. <laughs> just keep your comments to yourself. Sorry. It's just that she's a blood suck. Never mind. You've got to admit, it's a relief not having Tina around to badger you. I won't deny it. It is nice to be able to relax for a change, and it's hard to do that with it. Hi, everybody. So much for my relaxation. How do I look in my new dress? Beautiful, dear. Why'd you say it like that? Like what? Never mind. What did you buy, dear? Nothing. Guess what, Uncle Stewart? What? We went shopping into the park and then- Aunt Tina took us to a petting zoo. I got to pet a llama. You interrupted me. We got ice cream too. You did? Did you bring me any? No. Aunt Tina is so nice. Look what she bought me. Now, let's go eat those out on the patio, okay? I'll help you. What made you decide to be so friendly to Justine all of a sudden? I just thought that I should get to know her a little better, that's all. Since we all have to live together, we might as well try to get along. Are you sure you don't have some other motive? Like wanting to find out if there's anything going on between us? No, that's not true. Oh, come on. You don't trust me. Well, Damar, are you hearing this? Yes, don't worry, I'm paying attention. It's your turn. 
it's not that I don't trust you. I don't, I don't trust her. Uh huh. I knew it. Tina, Justine is one of the most trustworthy people in the world. She would never have an affair on her husband. Why are you defending her? I'm not defending her. It's the truth. It's, it's one thing for you to badmouth Stuart and Patsy. Most of the things you say about them are true. Hey. But for you to insult people like Justine that don't even deserve it, it's just wrong. There must be something going on between you two or you wouldn't be so protective of her. It has nothing to do with her. I don't believe you. And anyway, I don't, I didn't just go to be with Justine. I enjoy being with the kids. They're so adorable. You know how much I love kids. Earl, when are we going to have kids? Not that again. I told you we're not ready. When will we be ready? By the time you decide we're ready to have children, we'll be old enough for grandchildren. I, I just don't think it would be fair to the child if we bring it into the, into the world where we can barely support ourselves. Well, look, we can live at your uncle's now. There's plenty of room here for a baby. Don't you think that if we did have a child, we should take the responsibilities of it ourselves? Yes, but you're always making excuses not to have children. This is something that is very important to me, and you act like it's not a big deal. Tina, we don't know how long we're going to be here. What kind of parents would we be when we're not even in a stable home? But just as soon as we win, we'll have more than enough money to take care of a hundred kids. What do you mean, just as soon as we win? Has it ever occurred to you that we might lose? Yeah, right now you two are starting up a fight that could get pretty big. Stay out of this, Stuart. Oh, come on. Of course we'll win. There's no way those guys can stay together longer than we can. They don't even have the self-control that we do. You sound like you don't even care if we win or not. Maybe I don't. And I really don't like how you think we're better than everyone else. I don't think that. I just think in this situation, we're much more likely to win. What's wrong with being confident? There is a difference between being confident and being downright stuck up. I am not stuck up. And you just care about the money. That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Okay, prove it then. Let's move out right now and get our old apartment back. But then we'll lose out on the money if we don't live here. Exactly my point. If you really loved me, it wouldn't matter where we lived if, if it was here in this grand manor or at our apartment. Oh, now who's playing mind games? It's just ridiculous to miss out on such a great opportunity just because we're having a fight and both of us are being stubborn and juvenile. I don't need to prove anything to you. I could just as easily say to you, if you loved me, you wouldn't make me miss out on such a great opportunity. You are so good at turning things around. You know what? I've had it. I am tired. I am not going to spend another minute of my life in this misery just because I might have a chance to win some money. It's not worth it. Life is too short to be spending it with someone as selfish, superficial, and insecure as you. No amount of money in the world is worth it. And besides, I can make my own money with my music. I could have had a successfully, a successful career by now if, it, if I wasn't stuck here in this house with you. As soon as I get any kind of opportunity, you ruin it for me with, with your insecurity and your jealousy. I'm not gonna take it anymore. You can find some poor rich sucker that you can make miserable who will pay for all your extravagant whims. You think you are better than everybody else and I am sick of it. And you know what else? I don't love you. In fact, I can't stand you. I want a divorce. I'm moving out. Did, did you hear that? Did you hear that, Wildemar? They're out, they're out. What's going on here? I heard yelling. Earl just walked out. He told Tina he wants a divorce. They're disqualified. Really? Yes, I'm afraid so. Yes! Scene three, at Ron's, in the living room. Hey, buddy. It's official. Earl went down to the courthouse today and filed for divorce. It's just the four of us now. You ready to forfeit yet? No. What's wrong? You got another migraine? Yeah. Every time you get one of those things, it's always because you're stressing over something. You should be happy. There's one less couple to compete with. I'm not stressing over anything. Come on now, you can tell me. Did you and Justine have a fight? No. Oh, darn. This whole inheritance thing has made everyone on edge, hasn't it? I really don't want to talk about it. I just have a lot on my mind. Oh, I never have that problem. I know. You shouldn't keep things bottled up inside. You'll blow up just like a bomb. I had an aunt once. Well, 
Yeah, she's still my aunt, but. Uh, but Stuart, if I tell you what's wrong, will you promise to go away? Yeah, but, but not forever. Okay, well, it's lots of things, really. Justine, the kids are having problems at school, the bills, the inheritance, work. We, they just hired a new rep at work. He thinks he knows everything. Does he? No. And what's the problem? His sales are good. Better than yours? Yeah, but the reason is because he lies to the clients or leaves out important details to get the sale. He'll tell them anything they want to hear. It's people like him that give salesmen a bad name. If I were to lie like him, I could triple my sales, and I won't do it because I have a conscience. Oh, I never had that problem. I know. All the manager cares about is that we get the sales. He doesn't care if we do it immorally. I've been with this company for 10 years. And You've been with this company 10 years, and you're not the manager yet? You're not making me feel better. Sorry. I know a hell of a lot more than this guy, but his sales volume has been way up there for the past month and my boss is treating him like he walks on water. Does he? No. Oh, then what's the problem? I can't compete with this guy, not without com compromising my morals and values, but if I don't increase my sales, I could lose my job. The manager just increased our sales quota because of this guy. If I don't make the quota, he'll fire me. Then what am I gonna do? Justine will kill me. We've got so many bills to pay. You actually pay those things? Yes, don't you? I don't even worry about it. If you don't pay the first one, they always send you another one next month. Why am I even talking to you? So I'll go away, remember? But why don't you do something else? I'm not qualified to do anything else. All I've ever done is sales. Why would you do something you hate for 10 years? That just doesn't make any sense. I would never work a job I hated for more than a month. You would never work at any job more than a month. Well, yeah, that, that is true. But you're missing the point, Tony. Life's too important to waste it on a job. I can't understand why people want to work. All the people I know that work are crabby. And it, it just seems the, like the more money they make, the crabbier they get. It's like my sister. She used to be this sweet, bubbly, happy little thing. Then she gets a job. Now, every time she gets a promotion, she makes more money and she gets crabbier. I vowed never to be crabby and that's why I'm not working. It's not because I'm lazy like everyone thinks. Do you really want to be crabby, Anthony? No. All right then. Yeah, do you feel better? Much. Thank you. Now will you go away? Hi, honey. Hi, Stuart. How's your head, dear? It just got a lot worse in the past few minutes. Sorry, honey. You should do what I do when I have a headache. What's that? Have a drink. I think I'll go lay down for a while. Stu, you ain't drinking again, are you? No, cupcake. The wrong steward? Nothing a little gin and tonic won't fix. And rum and coke. And scotch and bourbon. And vodka and orange juice. Huh? And Bacardi and Coke. Huh? Patsy getting to you again? Again? That word would imply that she stopped from the last time, and she hasn't stopped since our wedding night. Bad, except that I can't do anything about it. Before all this inheritance stuff, I could go out for a while or divorce her or kill her. But now I can't do anything. I hate it. Now for me, this whole experience has been a kind of a turning point. You see, Anthony and I have been having problems for several years, and we have even seriously talked about divorcing. We've been having a hard time deciding what to do. On the one hand, we haven't had a good year of marriage in so long that we've been so unhappy. But on the other hand, I just can't bear the thought of tearing the kids apart. We just kept going back and forth, and it's been a very difficult and confusing year for us. I think Uncle Clarence's inheritance is a kind of a sign to point us in the right direction. You mean you're going to get a divorce so me and Patsy can have the money? No. I think it's a sign that we should not give up. That we need to work things out. And that's why I got all these books and relationships and marriage. I decided that what I need to do is to work hard on our marriage no matter what. I have to give it my all. Oh. Would you like to borrow some of these books sometime? Do they have pictures? Well, not many. No, no. I have a rule. I never read a book that has more words than pictures. But good luck to you. Wait a minute. If you have good luck, that means you'll win, which would mean I lose. Scratch that. Stu, 
I know you're drinking. If I come in there and catch you, you're not going to like it. I think you're too good for Patsy. I am? Yes. I know she's Anthony's cousin and everything, but we feel like you're more family to us than her. Ah, oh, like I told you before, I'm used to her. That's just her wife. And you don't mind? Not even when she says you can't go out, you can't see your friends, that you can't watch your football games because she wants to, to, you to do errands for her? She won't even let you visit your own mother. And Mrs. Blake won't be around forever, you know? She's not in very good health these days. What happens if she has another stroke and Patsy doesn't let you go see her? And she passes away before you even get to say goodbye? She, she wouldn't do that. Are you sure about that? Well, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe I ought to stand up to Patsy. Yeah. Mom's always been good to me. I, I should send, spend more time with her before she's gone. That's right. I gotta stop letting Patsy keep me from doing what I wanna do. If that means losing the inheritance, and that means, that means I won't get my big screen TV. Nope, can't do it. Can't risk losing my TV. Stuart. Coming, Dumpling. That was a nice service until Patsy's outburst. <sighs> yes, it was. Why did you scream fire in the middle of the funeral, Patsy? I had to make sure he was dead. He tricked us once already into believing he was dead when he really wasn't. Oh, that was just a misunderstanding, Patsy. You really believe that, don't you? I've got some contracts I need to fill out so I can get them in the mail before tomorrow. Justine, will you do me a favor and go through these papers Mr. Sizemore gave me? They're personal papers of Uncle Clarence. I don't think there's anything important, but I'd like to make sure. Okay. What's that? Looks like a journal or something. What's it say? I don't know if I should read it. It looks awfully personal. Come on, the man's dead. He won't do nothing about it. You might find something in there that will help us get out of this contract. Yeah, then we could get our money sooner. Read it. Okay, I guess you're right. You find anything yet? Uh, all these entries are addressed to Aunt Elizabeth, but they're dated after she died. One of the servants told me that he wrote to her every day after she passed away. It was probably his way of dealing with her death, kind of a therapeutic thing. Or maybe she ain't really dead. Maybe they're both screwing with us. This is so sweet. Listen to this. Dear Elizabeth, it's been five years since we've been gone. I miss you more than ever. I got all that money and I've done well with it, but all the money in the world doesn't mean anything to me. I've used it to keep myself as busy as I could, but it hasn't worked. I still think about you. I'd give it all up to have you back again. The times weren't always good, but they were all worthwhile. It was comforting to know that you were there with me through everything. I am nothing without you. I saw the doctor the other day. He said it wasn't cancer. A funny feeling came over me. I, I thought I would be relieved, but I was actually disappointed. When I thought about it, I realized that I just can't go on anymore without you. I've decided to join you. I've seen the world and I've done everything I want in life. The only thing is you're not here with me. It's not the same. No matter how much money I spend, I can never replace you. Our children are gone and I have no one left but our nephews and niece. I hope, my hope is that before I go, I can help them to find the true happiness we found, even if they don't deserve it. See you soon, darling. Even if we don't deserve it. Ha! I'm going to my room. Stu, let me know if she finds anything good. Okie dokie. Oh my gosh. Clarence wasn't terminal after all. We're all terminal, Justine. But he committed suicide. Did you know about this, Wildemar? Yes. And you didn't say anything? I'm very sorry, Anthony, but your uncle made me promise not to say a word to <laughs> anyone. And I always keep my word. Why didn't you try to talk him out of it? Well, I tried, but he was very adamant. He was very lonely, you know. And he wasn't in good health either. He couldn't get around like he used to. But he could have lived 20 more years. Sure, he could have, alone and miserable, and he could have watched himself get older and older and weaker and weaker. Or he could have done what he did and be with Elizabeth like he wanted. Well, none of you ever bothered to visit him anyway. Hey, I tried. He was never home. You could have sent him a card. 
or called him. Well, I think it's kind of romantic. It's like Romeo and Juliet. I think it's kind of stupid. Why kill yourself over a girl? Unless you were as wonderful as you, of course. It's not like he was young and had a lot of years ahead of him. He already had a fulfilling life. Yeah, he had four big screen TVs. I'll call it romantic or foolish. Clarence did what Clarence wanted to do. And I think every person has a right to that. The doorbell rings. I'll get that. Dave! Hey, Dave, haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Tony. Hi, Justine. Hey, Dave. Oh, where you been? You still mad at me? What do you mean? I'm not mad at you, but I thought you were mad at me because you haven't called me in months. Well, I haven't called you because Patsy said they got to call no more. She said you didn't want to see me ever again. She said what? She said that you didn't want me to come by or call ever again. And you believed her? Well, not at first. I kept trying to get a hold of you and to talk to you, but I, I could never reach you. And then when you never called me back, I figured she was telling the truth and you were mad. The reason why I haven't called you is because I thought you were mad at me. Why would I be mad at you? I don't know. Hey, but anyway, the reason I came here is that your sister called me the other day. Why'd she call you? You been hitting on my sister? Oh, man. She said she could never reach you. Uh, every time she tried to call, either you weren't home or Patsy wouldn't let, you, uh, let her talk to you. You're, she wanted to give me to give you a message. What, what is it? Your mom's in the hospital, and she wants you to go see her. What happened? I mean, she's okay. I mean, she fell and, and broke something. But, but she wants you to go see her. Oh, good. You, you, you sure she's okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's okay. It's, it's not serious. Your sister's with her now. Okay, okay. I, I, I was going to eat lunch right now, but I, I think I'll stop and get something, and then I can, I can bring it to her, or bring her something, too. You, you want to come with me? To the hospital? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. They got nurses at the hospital. You got a lot of catching up, man. Uh, let me just let Patsy know where I'm going. Well, no, no, man. I, you, you should just sneak out. I mean, she won't want you to go anywhere, especially see your mom. Well, if she says I can't go, I'll just tell her I'm going anyway. If you do that, we'll start a fight. I don't care. It is a bad temper. You might not be able to calm her down. She might do something that will cause her to cause you to lose uh, your temper. I, I got to see my mom. She'll, she'll understand. I thought I heard that rap. What's, what's he doing here? He's visiting me. It seems he was never mad at me like you said. Yeah, and Stuart was never mad at me neither. Well, Dave, you best be getting your little butt on out of here. Stuart was just getting ready to make me lunch. The servants are all off, remember, Stu? So you'll have to make me lunch today. Okay, honey bear, I, I can't make your lunch right now. I'm going to go see my mother. Oh, no, you're not. Um, I'll just wait for you in the car. <laughs> yes, I am. You see, she's in the hospital, and she, she wants me to come see her. Come on, Patsy. His mom's in the hospital. Well, if he don't make my lunch, he won't be the only one in the hospital. You can't threaten me anymore, dear. Why can't you make your lunch yourself? Fine, I will make it myself. Stuart, come on. No, Buttercup. I I'm, I'm going with Dave. I'll be back in a few hours. I can bring you back something if you want. No, I don't want you to bring me back anything. You're not leaving this house. Just a little louder, come on. Okay, then. Bye, Pumpkin. Stuart, don't make me mad. You'll make us lose all this money, Stuart. I don't care about the money. I, I have put up with you for the past eight years. You don't let me see my friends. You don't let me see my family. You don't let me go out. I can put up with the little things, but I can't let you keep me from the people I love. All you do is drink when you go out. You even lied to me and Dave to keep us from spending time together. He's a good for nothing liar himself. No, he is not. And he hasn't done anything to you to deserve the way you treat him. I'm, I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm leaving you. You don't care if you get your big flat plasma, what's it called, TV? Not if I gotta watch it with a bossy fat bag like you. Who are you calling a bag, you sloppy, stupid jerk? I can't believe you. We spent eight years together, and it's been the same all this time. And now when we had the chance to win a bazillion dollars, now is when you got to decide that you want to leave me? You ass. I don't care about that lazy good-for-nothing fool anyway. 
I don't need him. Well, I think with all that yelling, we most likely qualify as winners. Yeah, and if the yelling wasn't enough, the fact that she called him an ass and threw something at him was pro would probably do it. But somehow, I, I don't feel so good about it. Yeah, me neither. Let's find Wildemar and make sure he got that on tape. Scene five at Rise in the living room. Hey, Pat. Your stuff's already packed. That's on the bed in the room. Patsy, I'm sorry. Well, no, it's too late for that. We already lost. No, oh, I didn't come back because of that. Look, I, I really don't want to leave, Pat. I, I just wanted to see my mom, that's all. She never did like me. You never gave her a chance to, that's all. You can't keep controlling me, Pat. Just, just because I like to spend time with Dave or Mom or anybody else doesn't mean I don't love you. Come on. Well? You know you love me. Well, you think so. I know so, and I love you too. I guess I'll take you back. Nobody else is going to have you anyway. And can I see Dave and Mom when I want to? All right. You can see them once in a while. Now, don't think that I'm going to let you just take off any damn time you feel like it. I won't, Buttercup. Oh, you're back. Oh, I'm really sorry that you and Patsy didn't win. I wish everyone could have been winners. Oh, you do not. You never liked me from the beginning. That's not true, Patsy. You don't allow yourself to be liked. Oh, there you two are. I just wanted to congratulate you. I just got back from Mr. Sizemore's office. He started all the paperwork for the two of you. I'll let you know when they're ready for you to sign. I have to get back to the bank and take care of a few things, but I'll be back in a few hours and we can, we can discuss all the details. Well, we won. Yes, we did. Yeah, go ahead, rub it in our faces. Hey, dear, we can get divorced now. Yes, we can, but you know, there's just so much paperwork involved in a divorce. After all that we've been through trying to win this inheritance, I just don't feel like I'm up to a divorce. No, me neither. But I do feel like I'm up to a trip to Egypt. What about Idaho? Whatever. As long as I'm with you. You think you could find someone to run the restaurant for us a while, while we're away? Hmm. I could think of a couple people. You know, Justine, we've got plenty of money. What do we say? What do you say we share a little of it with our cousins? I what, what did he say? Uh, well, I suppose we could spare a million or two. Wouldn't hurt us that much. But Anthony, why don't we make a little game out of it? Yeah, you know how much I love games. I don't think they know the real meaning of marriage. No, but we can teach it to them. First of all, I like the idea of being around other actors again, which I haven't done in a long time. So any opportunity to get to, you know, get a bunch of creative people together in a room or a virtual room, whichever that opportunity. A lot. The Actors Fund stepped in and really helped me when I, I got injured in a play, actually, pretty seriously. And they stepped in and really helped me uh, in an immeasurable way. And I don't know what would have happened if they hadn't. And, and so another actor friend kind of pointed me in their direction. So anytime I can help raise money for the Actors Fund, I will. So much for tuning in please don't forget to donate to the actors fund the information is below and stay tuned tomorrow same time same place here at the new works virtual festival have a great night